Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to an early start time. I, I know this is a, a bit of a change of pace for everybody, but we're, we've got a lot, a lot of talk, a lot of things to talk about tonight. Today. So we're going to start, uh, we're starting at eight. Hopefully we don't go to midnight tonight. That'd be a very long show for me, but I think we can get things uh, you know, done or finished at a normal time, but we needed the extra hour. So I appreciate everybody starting, uh, coming in early and hanging out with us to get things started. I've got Micah in the green room. We're going to be doing a Comic Connect preview of, of the auction that they've got that begins, uh, this all starts ending uh, art-wise next Monday. And I've also got a, uh, we're doing a little thing with Nick and Dino in a little bit. I've got a weekly flip for you today. And of course, our regular calf update as part of all of this. So we're going to get started with the Comic Connect preview. And I've got Micah ready to go in the green room. How are you doing tonight, Micah? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for hosting us again. Thanks, everybody uh, who's watching us. My pleasure. That's uh, it's always nice to have you on, and we get to look at some of the art on the walls. One of these days, we're going to get to no do another tour of the place. I'm really well. Right now, uh, right now, our, our hallway is uh, a little bit obscured. We've had a couple of big collections come in, and that's kind of our staging area. So there's lots of the art is covered by comic boxes right now. But, uh, uh, we can't have it. art no. covered by comic boxes. That's I know. It's, it's, uh, yeah. The nature is that that big hall that I saw Vincent posted some uh, pictures on Facebook of uh, he and Steve in this in like this vault of just Rob, lots probably. of lots of comic books I remember. Well, there's we also have our our like our, our stock room, which is just wall floor to ceiling comic boxes. Mm -hmm. um, that's just our inventory. But um, you know the staging area for stuff that hasn't been processed yet is that hallway, and right now it's there's a lot. Well, sounds like you've got growing right. pains here. You're going to need your office. <laughs> well, so uh, I know you've been uh, you've been going out to a lot of shows lately. A lot. You're, you're, yeah, the summer you're was very uh, busy. The summer was a bit intense. I, I, you know, I missed conventions until they started again, and I was like, oh, right, these are hard. <laughs> <laughs> but they're fun. I'm. It was nice to be back at shows. It was nice to connect to people face to face. I missed that. For a couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's something I enjoy. Like I, I, I like the in-person, you know, interactions. Uh, so that was fun. Going to San Diego for the first time in three years was fun. You know, it's a lot of work. It's a long week, but it's 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 fun. Yeah, no, I. I, you I went to a couple. What's that? You went to a couple. I did. I did. I was at San Diego. I, you know, I, I keep wanting to go to New York this year, but I just, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I, I keep going. Well, so far for you now. It, it is a bit of a trip. And I'm going to Baltimore too. So the idea of doing two shows in a month. We will, uh, we are tentatively going to be in Baltimore. Okay. That's uh, the plan as of now. But we're not, we're not a hundred percent confirmed yet. All right. I'd like I'll to go. There. That's really fun. And I kind of like Baltimore. I've never been. I've never oh, been. It's a great, it's a great show. And Baltimore is a really interesting city. And it, it's it's one of my it's one of my as a fan it's one of my favorite comic book shows. All right. Well, I, I've heard great things about it. I mean, it's supposed to be on par with Heroes as far yeah, as it's, it's you know, similar to you. centric kind of art centric good, show. Good, like really good artist alley, no nonsense. Uh, yeah, comic viewers. And, you know, it's uh, it, it's fun. Good stuff. Good good. A lot of good stuff at that show. Cool. Well, it's a nice, I, and it's a nice I, yeah. Well, why don't we get into this uh, big preview? Because this is one of this. Uh, well, we were talking beforehand. This is for you the biggest uh, art auction segment that uh, you've you've had there since you've been it is. It's by a, comic over four hundred art lots. It's uh, it's a lot. For and you know, and that's it. It's just you know, it's it's for me. That's a sign that. Um, you know, our, our auctions are doing well. We're getting, we're getting really great results. And, you know, uh, the, the better results you get, the more people trust you to, to, you know, be the caretaker of their stuff. Exactly. Maverick Welch <laughs> says the Comic Connect fall tour is not for the weak of heart. You know, not if you're a comic art fan. <laughs> and, you know, when you go to a, when you go to a museum, do you get mad that you can't bring like the, Van Gogh's or the Rembrandt home with you, you know, right. it's, it's like that. You go, you look at great art and that's, you know, that's what it's there for. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not like it's for sale. So there aren't these like a prices on things where it's just, you just go like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's to be appreciated. 
that's that's the point of our of our collection that's on display. Well, one of these days I will make it to your office. Never, never been. Sure it's fun. Um, well, let's uh, let's get these uh, right. preview started here. I know I've seen some of these pieces at, uh, at Heroes and then at San Diego, I think. But, yep. uh, you know, we've got we're ordering everything at least as they are currently with the highest bid, you know, bids on items and then kind of going down there. But like we talked, we're going to kind of mix around a little bit with uh, regards to artists and some of the title pieces and whatnot. So, so yeah. uh, I just want to just, I'll just highlight each, go into each one of these and we'll take a look at them and then uh, we'll just kind of play everything by ear as far as switching Start around. Pretty cool. Spider-Man 252 pages. We have five, five of them, five pages from uh, the first uh, publication of Spider-Man in his black costume. Seven months, I believe before Secret Wars eight, which, you know, chronologically first, but I guess my exec is slow. <laughs> right. So, they're right here. so this takes place after that, but was published much much earlier. So this is the first the first time readers were exposed to the black suit, and we have a, a couple a couple really great pages. So this one, Spidey in every panel. I'm a big fan of this upside down head panel. Uh, yes, yeah, all over this page. Yeah, no, it's a great one. I mean, and you had it at Heroes with you, and yeah, it yeah. was fantastic. Uh, another one here, it's a splash page with uh, with Spidey. All right, let me go back. I'll highlight on you here for a moment. Go ahead. So yeah, it's like a nice splash page with a couple of inset panels, but like a really nice gives you a nice sense of scope and scale. Uh, you know, Spider Man. Looking cool in his in his fancy duds. It was the eighties. Everybody wore black in the eighties. I blame. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember that. Yeah, those did get a lot of attention from collectors when we were at the yeah. show. I remember when we were looking at them at uh, your booth. So no, these are these are great. No, they're really cool. And you know, you don't. They're the kind of things you don't really see them very often. And to have this many in one auction is really, it's really special. It's almost, it's, it's almost a quarter of the whole book. The 22 page book, five pages is, you know, the 22, 20, 23% of the entire story. Like that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Uh, and four of them. So a, a lot of the art, not a lot, but a decent amount of the art that's in this auction and other, other things in addition to art are come from the collection of Tom DeFalco. So we're, we're selling some of Tom's collection. And what I think is, is the most interesting thing about that, aside from the fact that it's just cool, you know, I got to go to Tom DeFalco's house. It's, it's Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, <I'm jealous. laughs> but like the pages that we're selling for him have never been for sale before ever. So like he got them when the books came out because at that point writers were still getting a percentage of the artwork. Mm -hmm. So he got his pages when the book was made and they've never been for sale so i'll point out other things as we go but four of the five of the spidey 252 pages have never been on the market ever and wow. as an art as an art collector like as in, in comic art especially like I, that's that's exciting you know something that nobody's ever owned before really no collector has ever owned these well, there, there is always the freshness to market yeah. factor. I mean, I've, I've always tried to say that it isn't a factor, but it really is at the end of well, the day. It, it, as far it as excitement it, goes. It, it isn't. It, it, you know, it, sometimes you see pieces selling over and over again every couple of years. And, you know, that it, it, it diminishes the excitement a little bit. It doesn't make the art less good or, no. you know, but it, it's, it's definitely like, oh, this is new. I've never seen this before. I want to try to get this because, you know, with art, you know, when you see something you like, you, you have to have in your mind that you may never see it for sale again. You know, a lot of people buy things and keep them forever. Or don't sell them, you know. So it's it's one of those things that makes art special. You mm -hmm. know, I, I completely agree. I mean, the more I've seen it because uh, I've seen too many new you know collections that have been uh, you know like black hole collections come onto the market and mm -hmm. everything gets bought up almost immediately things that, that oh. people haven't seen in 25 years or so and uh, similarly like you were just saying a piece that's been shopped around every other year maybe or every two years ends up you know it may it may still do well but it it, it might not sure. realize those super you know choice prices that the but you get 
uh, I mean, I was just looking at something today that that will be in our next auction that I couldn't find evidence of anybody ever having sold uh, even like a similar piece. And that's interesting to me. It's like, well, what, what, what does that mean? Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, what's the value on something like that? I have no idea. There's no comparable sales. Uh, so we'll find out in a few months for the next auction. Uh, I'll leave that as a little teaser. You can talk about that in three months. All right. <laughs> but it's like, it's, I was looking up, it's like, oh, that's interesting. Like, these are rarer than I thought. There's some stuff that we'll get to in a little while. It's in this auction, too, that I, it, I didn't think about it, but it's like, it makes sense why they're not on the market. And I'll, I'll it's other DeFalco stuff, but we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to that. Okay. Anyway, here's another Spider-Man 2 for Stupid. This is page two, Spider-Man 252. The first two pages are both uh, these like newspaper slash pages with that's J. Jonah Jameson reading the Daily Bugle, uh, reading about the missing heroes and you know the the ongoing events of the Secret Wars. But uh, yeah, basically just wondering what's happening. You know, well, where are the heroes? Uh, but it's cool. It's a nice, very comic booky sort of introduction, sort of recaps like the story thus far kind of kind of device, but. Cool, very well executed. Uh, and Ron Friends, you know, Ron Friends, I think, is finally getting the, more, the respect he deserves. He's a, he's a very solid artist, did a lot of work, and uh, it's nice to see him getting some respect. It was nice to see, like, at Heroes Con this year, Ron was, was very busy doing commissions and signing books. And, you know, it's nice to see these, you know, guys who you may think of as, like, old timers uh, still getting some love. From fans but anyway i think this is cool i like collage pages too yeah um, no, it, it is and I, and I talked with ron a little bit at the show too he he was very busy i mean i, I yeah. was thinking of asking him for, to do a drawing and then i was like shoot he's just so busy I'll, I'll wait until you know for another show when he's not so overwhelmed but uh, yeah. but figured that was the first uh, you know probably one of the first big shows he's been back to since the pandemic so it's good it's a good thing that he was busy Tom Tom DeFalco was actually supposed to go to Heroes this year. It was supposed to be a whole big like reunion of sorts, but uh, I think COVID kind of kept him away from that. But he'll be around. He'll be around. But anyway, here's page three of Spider-Man 252. Nope. Oh, wait. Nope. They're out of order. Sorry. Here's page three of Spider-Man 252. So this is to me. This this is a, it's revealed that it is J. Jonah Jameson and him. He, uh, you know, basically trying to figure out how this is all Spider-Man's fault, which is funny. And at the bottom here is you see the sort of this is the um, the on the next page is when all the heroes come back from from space. So this is sort of the 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 beginning of like the return of the heroes and writing right. his new uh, in his new outfit. Uh, and now this one, which is page uh, page thirteen. This is just Peter Parker, um, is a black cat who's looking for looking for him, and uh, Peter Parker uh, doing what all New Yorkers do when they've been away from New York for a long time. He's uh, getting pizza. I was gonna say, does he buy a hot dog? He gets a pizza. pizza. All right. <laughs> and also, his clothes here, his clothes are the black suit. They the the this, because of the properties of the suit that it actually transforms into his civilian clothes. So. Technically, still Venom. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really handy. Yes, and like you said, during that was the the era when everybody was wearing black too, so that worked out really well. That's true. Well, he was cool. I mean, he was cool. <laughs> All right, that's so that's it for the Spidey two fifty two pages. There's a lot of them. I expect I expect them to be highly sought after. It's it's a very it's an important book. Uh, and there's only so many pages. Right, right. And I saw Marcus posted something so that, that I was arguing about uh, to, to people not have post posting their artworks to calf so that they're fresh to market. I really mean, when I said that, I really meant it more for sale. I mean, I think people, right. you know, it, it can post their stuff in their calf gallery, but most people, you know, if it's a, if it's in Dave Mandel's gallery or, or you know, or Dina's right. gallery, it's not for sale. Right. You can look at it, but so when one of those pieces comes up, then, you know, that's new to market. I there mean, is something it, to be said also for pieces that when they surface, like they're just, they're pieces that nobody even knew where were. Correct. Like that's exciting too. That said, I don't, you know, if something's on cap, it doesn't mean it's for sale. So it's, it's sort of the same thing. 
Right. I'm more talking about those pieces that people haven't seen at all. Yeah. That yeah. Pop up. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I've, like I say, in the last few months, there's been a couple of collections that came out there and they were, they were and I heard some of the prices too. And they were, and they were, like, they were that's, over that's our, that's our main page that sold last week. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and then nobody knew where that page was. Right. Uh, and yet, from what I heard, that page was the person who sold that page bought it, you know, in the 80s and uh, only bought it because they collected art with horses on it. Right. It had nothing to do with it being from the Dark Knight or anything. It was just like, oh, it's got a horse on it. I'm going to buy that. And it was probably, I don't know, and it was the 80s. It was probably a few hundred dollars. Yeah. And then they well, did pretty well. They lucked out, right? <laughs> exactly. That, that was their, uh, their passion. Uh, Mike Callahan wants to know, uh, is Micah showing pre-selected pieces or can he show other pieces someone might be interested in? I mean, they are pre-selected. Uh, yes right? and no. There are, they are pre-selected, but I have a good amount of them. Uh, what do you want to see? Yeah, so feel free to let us know while we're going through the preview. If I have it handy, I will uh, show. Yeah, no, we aim to please tonight. Um, but next up, I believe, is more Ron Friends. All right. Oh, the Thor? Thor, uh, what is this, 412? 412? The first, uh, I mean, it's semantics, but I would say this is the first appearance of the New Warriors. They do appear in one panel on the, the last panel of issue 411. But uh, this is sort of the, you know, re the real introduction to the world of the New Warriors. Um, who, you know, are, are as I've learned, a, a pretty popular super team. This page, this cover's gotten more interest than I maybe expected. Uh, but it, right. it's a great cover. It's a great cover. And I think... Um, and it might be it might be me showing my age a little bit that maybe people a little bit younger than me have a much more like of a nostalgic attachment to the new warriors and i think they're cool i love speedball but i'm a ditko guy <laughs> but it, it's cool i love that you got thor and the juggernaut being interrupted by this team of young sort of teenage goofballs <laughs> yeah uh, no, but it's, really cool. it's great it's really and you got synod inks on it too yeah right? yeah, yeah. nice and crisp uh, no, it, it, it's great, and I, uh, it's another one that I expect. Uh, I expect there to be several bidders who are really interested in this on Monday. Oh yeah, very cool. And again, it's another DeFalco piece that has never been for sale ever. Been in DeFalco's house since uh, since 1989. Wow. Well, I mean, we've been talking about that a bit lately of just a few creators who have held on to their stuff and they're finally letting it go and they're using auction houses to get it out there. Milgram's doing it. Uh, to yeah. it. So, it, you know, it's good. I'm glad that they held on to it, right? I mean, they didn't really. Sure, and, it, you know, it turned out to be a great decision. Right. Monetarily. Sure. You know, I mean, what would this cover have sold for in 1989? I don't know. Would it have sold for $200? Like maybe less. I was gonna say maybe two fifty, but even then, yeah. that's probably you know wishful thinking. Yeah. No, I mean, I bought I bought covers in the early nineties for under three hundred dollars. Yeah. I wish I could go back and buy them again. <laughs> buy more of them. Well, I like this cover a lot. I think it's gonna do uh, well. Yeah, no, it's very cool. And clearly, it's already your you know the second highest item in yeah. the auction. Yeah. So it's it's got a lot of interest. And then, so we have talked about the two fifty two pages already, but. Yeah. The next one this is one of my favorite pieces in the whole auction. That's the uh, the Miller. Miller. Yeah. Here I'll switch it over here to you. The Electra lives again. Sorry, just glare. This page is on vellum, so it's a little hard to show on a on a video. But uh, I love this book. I loved it when it came out. I still love it. It's one of my favorite Miller books. I think the art is great. Uh, this is amongst the most memorable sequences in the book, you know, electrifying ninjas in a cemetery. Uh, I, I love everything about it. I love that the only dialogue is just like grunting. <laughs> Very Miller. You know, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's fantastic. And I love the, you know, it doesn't need a panel divider there for those two scenes. It's great. No. It's absolutely no, and great. It's just, you know, Miller really trusting the color. But I still think that the, the black and white, you know, the black and white line art is still great. It's great. It's Miller, you know, he's a he's a little bit of a uh, of a of a chameleon when in his art. His art changes a lot from book to book, especially in the '80s. 
And I, I made it it made it interesting. Like Ronan doesn't look like the Dark Knight. Doesn't that doesn't look like the Daredevil work. It doesn't look like you know, and then the Electra and then Sin City. It's like, you know, he was constantly pushing himself as an artist. And that's uh that's always great to see. Yeah, Michael Callahan, I wanted to see if you brought any of the Tim Sale Thieves World uh, pieces. The Thieves World I don't have. We will get to the volumes. All right. Um, I do have the other Tim Sale here that we'll get to eventually, but I did not grab the Thieves World page. I'm sorry. That's all right. So, uh, really. so what is next? Is that the uh, Busema? Is that what you yeah. have? Oh, my God. I love this page, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this one as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, just Galactus and Mephisto and Nova by Busema. I mean, what more? Do, I don't even, it's just, it's so cool. You know, Galactus, both visually and just as a character, just one of my favorite Marvel characters, period. Uh, and you know, that's a testament to Kirby, just like knowing how to make something that just looks awesome. And Bisema, I mean, Bisema second to Kirby, and, and you could argue maybe better than Kirby on Silver Surfer, that he really embraced the, 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 the cosmic scope of, of, the, of the stories. And yeah, in 1988, Bisema was still, yeah, still uh, like working at the top of his game. And I've never seen a page from this book before. I, I know that there are a few of them have been around, but it's been a while. And uh, yeah, it's 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 just a, it's just great. No, I agree. I mean, it's it is gorgeous. Yeah, and Bisema Inc. Most I think it's Bisema inked it with an assistant, but I assume that means the figures are all Bisema inks. Right. Which are also like super cool. Uh, I mean, even if he didn't ink this as a background, the inking is great. The inking, the, the inking on the, uh, I don't know, is that like smoke or, uh, I don't know what, it, I don't know what it is, but, and the, the inking on the, the, the hellfire smoke background. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, uh, nope. Just, I agree. That's going to, yeah, one, one lucky collector to own that yep. one. Yep. Really. I mean, I, I always love the way Busema drew Galactus. I mean, they were always pivotal Marvel moments and things. So, yeah, this is great. For sure. There's some more Busema coming up later, too. That's, uh, that's also pretty great. All right. Now let's go to the other, to the Distinguished Competition. <laughs> All right. We can switch over to uh, some DC, right? What do we got? Oh, like Garcia Lopez. All right. Let me pull that one up here. Jose yeah. Garcia Lopez. Wow. Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, fighting somebody called the Brute, who was having his way with Doctor Midnight. You can see Doctor Midnight kind of being toyed with. But yeah, Garcia Lopez is great. I, I, I think he's another guy who's kind of getting the, the due he deserved. I've always been a fan. Um, I wish I had picked up some of his art years ago, but uh, there's always a there's, you know there's a lot of it. It's a, you know, but not these covers. You know. You, Covers don't come around very often. The Wonder Woman cover, 1977. It, yeah, I love these like 70s, 70s DC covers, especially uh, the 70s Marvel covers too. There's something like really, the 70s were an interesting time for everything, you know, movies and TV and comics. They had a very unique flavor to them. Uh, oh, yeah, a lot for a lot of reasons. Even the, the coloring of the books. Yeah. I mean, the, well, there was the, like a. There's like a darkness that sort of permeated all media. You know, movies got, you know, got darker and more realistic. You know, Marvel did all their horror titles in the 70s. And DC brought back a lot of horror titles in the 70s, too. It's like, I don't know. So there was something in the air. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even like The Brute. The Brute wouldn't have been in a Wonder Woman comic in the 60s. No, not at all. You know, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And it's, you know, it's almost 50 years ago now. It's great. Not making me feel younger. Yep. Uh, David Matheny says we should do a whole show on uh, Jose Garcia Lopez. I mean, we really could. I mean, he's had an amazing career. Yeah, uh, I mean, I could talk I about how great the art was in Atari Force. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, the thing is, I never even read Atari Force, and I've seen some pages There's from no it. I want to own them. The pages look gorgeous. There's no reason to read Atari Force. <laughs> Man, the art is so good. 
But no, I get it. I get it. I, but I want. I'll read it one day. I'll have to. But because I've seen There's the art. Yeah. 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 No. I I remember even as when I was a kid, there was something about the art in Atari Force that was just like like oh this is interesting like this is different before I even recognized like artists' names or anything like that. It was just like oh that that's cool. Yeah. Nope. I'm with, I'm with you 100 percent on that. Yeah. Uh, what do we have to do next? Is it? Uh, uh, I think it's that uh, John Romita Jr. John Romita Jr. Yep. Here, let me uh, switch over to you there for you. I like uh, the, this is a period of the X Men that I really enjoy. That sort of post John Byrne sort of. I think it was yeah, and this is even after they Paul Smith had started already. Um, but it's a really good work from Romita Jr. and um, I'm rogue all over. Like rogue is rogue is one of my favorite X Men from this time period, and I like this her using another mutant's powers. This rogue rogue using Storm's powers that she's I want to let's say borrowed <laughs> or uh, stole. <laughs> yeah, yes. I was being generous. I was being polite. <laughs> well, but, and it, it, it is Mohawk Storm too. Uh, not well. She's not on the page. Oh, she is. Well, yeah, she is on the her? page. I thought that was her. Yeah, Maybe it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, I knew that. I was definitely aware of that already. <laughs> um, but yeah, just you know, this is a really cool page, really beautiful drawing. Like I love the effect, the effect of the sort of vortex that Romita Jr. drew. And Dan Green inks. Dan Green, the guy who I still think doesn't quite get enough respect. I think Dan Green did a lot of really great work, especially on X Men. Uh, I mean, my when I when I started reading X Men, you know, month to month, it was Green over Silvestri, mm -hmm. and I still really like the art in those comics. And, oh you know, no, I agree. I think Dan Dan Green is a uh, is a really great anchor. But look at how great that last, that last panel with the uh, the close up of the eyes and the swooshing of the wind. It really, just really good. It's good drawing. Well, I agree. I agree. This is a, this is a nice one. From and, a young, uh, young John Romita Jr. Or I'd say early-ish in his uh, X-Men run. He'll always be he'll always be young in my mind. <laughs> he, yeah, I think he's like 70 years old now, which is crazy. He doesn't look it, though. <laughs> I, I, I was at a meet and greet with him in, uh, at Heroes for a you know, half hour. They let me go in mm -hmm. and film it. And yeah, I mean, he's his, he, he would never guess he's over 60. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's weird. Again, the passage of time is... Uh, She's a harsh, harsh mistress. Exactly. So uh, well, let's see. We, uh, Astonishing Tales cover next by Rich Buckler. Oh, and Kazar. Uh, Kazar and, and Manthing. This is the Manthing's very first cover appearance. So the third appearance overall. For, so Savage Tales 1, which he's not on the cover of. And then his first comic book appearance is Astonishing Tales 12, which he's not on the cover of. And then here we go. Somebody finally decided Man Thing was worth putting on the cover or something. And uh, I, as they should. And, and it, you know, Buckler, Buckler inking himself. Uh, just a lot of fun. Saber Tooth Tiger, Kazar, Man Thing. I guess, and the rumor has it that Man Thing will be appearing in the Werewolf by Night special on Disney Plus. Yeah. It's true. Oh, I, I actually, I thought I saw this like millisecond flash of him in that in that uh, preview that they did, and so I, I literally sat there and went frame to frame to frame, and I was like, "There's the man thing." So I, I'm like, "Shoot, that's going to be awesome." Cool. That shower was great, and I can't wait for that. Uh, yeah. And having I don't and I, I I hate to admit it, I'm in front of however many people are watching, but I have never read an issue of World by Night. No. <laughs> so. I was a big horror fan, so I, I read sure. all that. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, there's a lot of that that era of kind of offbeat titles that I've never read, but mm -hmm. someday there's always there's still time. Oh yeah. But I have read Man Thing comics, and I do love the Man Thing. And this is the first cover. And it's cool. Uh, it's another one that I think somebody's going to be really pleased to uh, to end up with next week. I agree. Got uh, 27 bids on it, just uh, at 5,000 right now. So I expect that price to move. I will. I will believe it as well. I can't see how it can't. So 
That is a good one. So, oh, now we got some Jack Kirby. Is that Mr. next? Kirby. Mr. Kirby, Mr. Thor. Uh, I will again defend Vince Coletta all day long, especially for the work he did over Kirby on Thor. I think it separates Thor from all of Kirby's other arts at the time. It, Coletta makes Thor stand out. And, and it's not an argument of better or worse. It's just that I like that Thor feels different from Fantastic Four or from, you know, from X-Men or from Silver Surfer or you know, anything else that Kirby was doing. Thor feels like Thor. And it, it, Coletta adds sort of like a, almost like a, a realness to it. It feels old. Coletta yeah. thinking has like a more old illustratory style to it than say Synod or Chick Stone or any of the, you know, the other Kirby anchors from the 60s. Uh, and it would be great, they have Half Splash, and then Thor, like, whacking a guy twice. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have always enjoyed Coletta's inks on Thor. The, like, the little tick lines he does in, in mm -hmm. the mus musculature and everything of the characters. I mean, there's just something about it. I, I mean, Coletta seemed to care a little bit more when he was working on... Uh, I, think, I think a lot of the... Um, a lot of the... When, when Coletta would ink Kirby on, say, Fantastic Four or on another title, I and I don't know this beyond just it makes sense to me, I think Coletta was a last minute, like, we need this job done, and Coletta could do it quickly, which is why maybe the work isn't as good mm -hmm. when he did those fill-in issues, because he probably was inking, you know, issues of the Fantastic Four in, like, a weekend. And it, and it shows. I'm not, I mean, I get tar you can't deny it that in some of the work it shows that it looked like it was done fast, but not on Thor. Like on Thor, he put time into it, you can tell. Yeah, very true. And one question from Michael Callahan about that, uh, the Man Thing cover, was the title logo original or was it? Yeah, uh, it was original. I'm pretty good about, in my descriptions, about when, when titles aren't original. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if it doesn't say, then they are. Um, I mean, we all, you know, we all sometimes make mistakes, but I try to be pretty clear on things like that. Um, I would want to know. So, right. yeah, so all, 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 all original later facts, too. Yeah, all original facts on the on the on the astonishing tales. Very nice. Uh, and I know that because I had to kind of put it back down. It was sort of popping up a little bit. Ah. <laughs> well, you don't want it falling off before it gets nope. to the customer. You know, Tricks of the <laughs> oh man! All right, so we, we've I've got a pasting back balloons and type. <laughs> I've pasted a few word balloons back on too. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not that hard. You just get them acid free glue. It's fine. Right, you have to. Yeah. Get, what, and whatever acid free glue you're getting is better than whatever glue they did use originally. Yeah, that that's for sure. <laughs> right, no staining this time. No, no rubber from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Deodato. Yep, that's what I thought we were on. Yeah. So, from my understanding, uh, I can't say with any authority because I don't know 100%, but I was told that this was originally drawn, so it was published in 2002 in an issue of X-Men Unlimited, but I was told that it was originally drawn in the late 90s uh, to be a cover, and then for whatever reason went unused and was eventually published in in the, the as a pinup uh it's not dated on the artwork so it, it's hard to know you can't i can't prove that but it makes sense it looks like a cover uh and really good pen, it's all pencil it's all pencil drawing from deodato it's, it's, it's some of the tightest darkest pencil drawing i've ever seen you know it looks inked from from a distance i mean i thought it was inked so i'm yeah. glad you said that yeah so it says in the you know Again, my descriptions are accurate. I didn't read the description on this one. I well, mean, I'm, I, yeah, that is it is my fault. I, I didn't do my research. I'm sorry. But it, it looks more like a '90s Wolverine than 2000s Wolverine. But yeah, yeah, for sure, you know. But yeah, Dan Otto, you know, he was around for a long time, and good, good artist. Yeah, no, thanks. Nice. You know, Gene and actually, is that Emma? I think that's Emma. And and uh, and Scott and Wolverine and Professor X. Yeah, that's definitely. Oh, that might be Gene. I, I don't remember. It's hard to know in black and white if that's uh, Gene or Emma. 
It does say Emma. It does say Emma. Okay, so it means, it means I looked at it in color. There. That, yes, exactly. You gotta. Nice but no, it's an I like the Diodato's work, and I mean, all pencil that's yeah. just crazy, yeah. I agree, and, and I think the price reflects that. It's a good, it's a good piece, yeah. Strong price already. Uh, next know. is a, an, a, an awesome piece. Awesome, is this the Kirby? Kirby, oh, yeah. so, funny. Uh, so this is the cover to an issue of the Marvel Mania fanzine, and to the best of my knowledge, one of the only known Kirby Spider-Man published covers that still exists. So, uh, and it's, yeah. So the, the, the cover to the Marvel Mania was printed from the pencils of this piece. Oh, really? And, and it was printed this way, but clearly the drawing is supposed to be horizontal because otherwise this guy's sideways, the guy's right. bottom. Um, but so the, there was a lot of, I talked to a lot of people about who they thought may have inked it. And the general consensus is that it's, it was almost definitely either Kirby himself, uh, who hated inking and, or, or Roz who did ink some of his work. So it's entirely possible that one of them just saw this piece. It had already been published from the pencils and was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna ink that. I, I could see Kirby himself saying like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, play around with this and try and ink it a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's still awesome. And you, a lot of the pencils, almost all the pencils are still visible. Uh, yeah, just with Kirby's Spider-Man was very interesting and right. he didn't draw very often. Occasionally, I think he, said he didn't like drawing Spider Man, right? No, no, but I'll say that Ditko's Spider Man design is a lot better than Kirby's Spider Man design. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you on that one as well. But no, this yeah, is an awesome, uh, awesome image. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a testament to Kirby's humanity is that not everything he did was perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's give Spider Man to, to this other guy because. Mm, but he drew, he drew Spider-Man pretty good. I mean, I think it's a good drawing. Oh, heck yeah. No, no. Not, he definitely not, didn't like drawing the little spider logo, though, because that's a common thing on Kirby drawing the Spider-Man is that he didn't draw the logo. Yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, you know. You, weird. Yeah. yeah. He's, he just refused to do it. Somebody else can do that for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, speaking of Wally Wood, right? I think we're moving to yeah. Wally Wood. These are awful. Oh, man. These, um, this is from the Warren Magazine, 1984. Uh, Wood only contributed a, uh, to the first two issues. And I think the first issue was just uh, sketchbook material. So the, the, the story he did for the second issue, I think, I'm not, don't hold me to this. I believe it's the only like original material that Wood provided for 1984. And it, even, it's like 19, it's 1978, but it's still so instantly recognizably Wally Wood that it's, it's a, you know, he was old, you know, I mean, he, Wally Wood died in 1981. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he was getting up there in, in age and he's like, but he's still, when, when he cared about the work, he still made it look beautiful. And this has got a Wally Wood all over it. Just naked ladies and knights and castles and this winged guy. <laughs> No, it's it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it's really, it sounds really cool on there too. I mean, I I like the use of it in the uh, those last wall. Well, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. really it's really yeah, cool. Well, he's, well he's done. Uh, and this is another one where I uh, I couldn't find any evidence of anybody actually owning any pages from this story. Huh. So nothing on the market before. That's interesting. Nope. Not that I could find. I mean, you know, I don't have access to everything that's ever sold. But there's not there's no pages on cap. And there were none that I could find having ever sold publicly before. And uh, so we have this one and this one, which is also great. The tree that's a great tree with skeletons and more nudity because <laughs> Wally would. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, it, they're just beautiful. 
think yeah i've always wanted a like a canon strip, uh -huh. you know i just have never found the right one but uh but no i love wally wood stuff and it, but then if i owned anything by wally wood it would be a canon strip but but i mean these i would want i would want an ec but yeah right i mean so well yes yeah, so i'm just i'm trying to say thinking the what i could potentially own at least a wall you know a canon might be you know in that five or six range For maybe sure. but ec yeah. that's going to be out of my of course my wallet no, but man. this piece it, you know this piece has got to be you know it's 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 gorgeous both of those pages the only wood i have personally is just a one panel of sky masters of him inking kirby Oh really? You know that's I always forget about him inking Kirby on that. He inked Kirby a bunch of times. Sky Masters, Challengers of the Unknown, uh, even some issues of, of um, uh, what was it? Not Sandman. The Sandman. It might have been Sandman in the seventies. There was Wood did some inking over Kirby in the seventies too. Didn't he? And I it, I like that combination. It's it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. oh, I agree. Sorry, I'm fixing my filters here. I was trying to no find the other Wally Wood piece while uh, when you were showing it, and I messed everything up. Oh, but, uh, okay. We can talk about the next piece while I'm digging around here. So, yeah, is your piece with the next one? Yes, go ahead. Let's I love this piece. So it's uh, it's it's really interesting. So it's this is from uh, one of the the Warren Spirit magazines from the '70s. So the the base. Some of the earliest, like like extensive spirit reprints. So this is uh, from a little a text segment, a text piece in the in the issue called Spirit Women's Book. And this was the header header illustration that Eisner did. And I don't know that I've ever seen another example where Eisner drew all of the women from the spirit at the same time. And just the you know. Pagel and Sam Satin and Ellen uh, Ellen Dolan is like, uh, and it, I mean Eisner in the seventies, the art was just so good, and so the, the Warren magazines were printed with the, with gray tones, so Eisner went in and hand painted the gray the gray tones in paint, so you get the spot sort of grays on the women, but the spirit face, which is the poster in the background, if you um, there you have the other image is, is there on the page if you want to pull it up. What's that? Oh, there is another yeah. one? Oh, yeah. oh, I, oh, I see what you're saying. So, yeah. You see the spirit face is almost totally painted on the paint layer. There we go. Uh, and it's just, I, 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 I love this piece. Uh, I mean, Eisner, you know, Eisner's on my Mount Rushmore of comic artists. And Eisner spirit especially, and you know, he did a decent amount of new spirit work in the 70s, but this is this is a relatively early one. 75, it's a, from like issue eight, I want to say. Uh, issue eight, yes. And just, yeah, wonderful. We have, coming up later, we have the colors to the cover of issue eight um, of the Warren spirit, which in all the, a lot of the early Warren spirit covers were all colored, like hand colored, like fully painted by Ken Kelly. Oh, nice. So it's like over, uh, there's like an acetate of the, of, of, we'll talk about it when I, all right, uh, you know what, I'm just going to show you because it's here. If you can find it, it should be somewhere on that first page. So, all right. so the, the Eisner's line art is on an overlay. It's a little, not quite lined up properly here, so you're getting a little, little bit off register, but that can be adjusted. Uh, but if you remove it, if you find it um, on the site, you can show the image of just the the painting without the 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 overlay of the line art, and I don't. It doesn't even need it. It's the, the painting is great. Yeah, I've actually. Uh, and, 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 yeah. Yep. Let me switch over to it. So that's yeah, that's the painting without any of the line art, and Correct. it's still great. And if you put if you go to the other image with the line art, because it'll be easier to see. It's the yeah, second one. It's the second one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so you can you can see it on the on the actual acetate. Uh, Kelly actually scraped away some of the line. So if you look at the image, you can see like there's some outlines that are gone. And so Kelly actually removed some of Eisner's line art so that the the painting could actually define the figures. 
And I think that for this image specifically with the women, it makes the figures softer. And, okay. and, it, and, it, and it shows a lot of trust that Eisner had in Kelly to let him do that. You know, to, to alter his, his drawing. Sure, sure. I think it's great. I think it's super cool. Oh, no, it's it's gorgeous. It really yeah. is. I mean, I'm, it's huge. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's huge. Look how big it is. <laughs> What's the size? I'm not looking uh, at it. It is uh, almost 20 by 25. Wow. Yeah. From 75. That's huge. Yep. yep. Well, that, uh, that's the, the next one. The next piece is also huge. Oh man, let's see. Well, what is the next piece? You tell me, and I'll um, do it. Oh, I'm right. what you're talking about. Yep, X Men Blue cover. Uh, I believe that is the not actually Wolverine. I think that's uh, the 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 Wolverine's son. I forget his name. I'm sorry. Uh, it'll say in the description on the piece. Now, there's a lot of detail on that one. So much detail. I don't know. There's not that many artists that do detail as well as Art Adams, and have been in it and have been doing it for 40 years. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's one of the. You know, a lot of artists. You know, especially you know you who are especially artists who are popular from a specific era. Eventually, they get kind of pushed out by younger artists, and that never happened to Art Adams. He's always been one of the most popular artists in comics for as long as he's been making them. Since you know, since long shot, now it's like what, like 1984 or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, every era has its like classic Art Adams comic. You know, he's, and he, he, I don't know anybody who likes comics who doesn't like Art Adams. Even people who don't read superhero comics at all, they all love Art Adams. All right, well, it's, there's a reason he's got, you know, so many people yeah. wanting to get commissions from him and his originals. I mean, he'll, he, his work is always going to be sought out. One of the hardest commissions I ever tried to get. It's yeah. Long time, it several years. Uh, you got one, though, right? I did. I did, like, yeah, like seven, eight years ago. Good. Um, and I couldn't be happier with it. It's perfect. I had him draw I had him draw a monkey because he's already <laughs> Did he look at you funny when you asked him for that? No, I had uh, he, drew, he drew Detective Chimp for me. Right. Uh, okay, that's awesome. Because I can't get Infantino to draw Detective Chimp. Mm -hmm. So who's better than who's who's the next best guy to draw a monkey? <laughs> Nobody but him. It's Art Adams. The answer is Art. <laughs> well, I'd like I'm to glad, I'm glad you had the nerve to do that because everybody else would have you know done something a little different. They would have. No, he, he didn't even bat an eye. He was like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I asked uh, I asked Neil Adams to draw a sentinel for me when I got to ask for something, he he looked at me like I was kooky. Really? <laughs> yeah. Neil Adams weird things. I know, and I said, "Well, you've drawn them before, right?" I mean, as a commission, you know, I said, "You draw one." For, you know, he's like, "Oh yeah, I've done a couple." <laughs> he drew. I mean, he drew them in the X Men. I know. Well, that's why you know whenever I think of him, and I, you know, as an X Men fan, I always think of those Sentinel books, and that's why I want. I, I, I think of Havoc. Okay, Havoc, Havoc would have probably been my second choice if yeah. I would have had, had him do it. Uh, yeah, but there's that classic Sentinel cover by Adams, right? Right, yeah, of course. But anyway, I believe we're up to Greg Capullo. Yes, we are. A, uh, let me swing it over to you for a second. So Capullo's pencils and uh, Jonathan Glappy and Zinx separately, but both included with the, uh, with the piece. Uh, yeah, Capullo, he's a guy whose career really took a turn. Um, I will admit that I was not his biggest fan when, when, he, when, he, when he was drawing Spawn. Mm -hmm. But after that, you know, especially the Batman work, uh, a total, like, a, like a different guy. It's like interesting drawing, you know, it's like really dynamic, really like full of energy. Uh, and there's there's a reason why he's so popular. I mean, this is there's a reason why this is one of the you know one of the higher pieces at the moment in the auction. It, it, this stuff is in demand, and yeah, it's it's well, everybody it's cool. likes the kind of uh, yeah, know, this is the, the, the very uh, strong characters, usually very kinetic kind of energy around uh, you know fight scenes and stuff. I mean, oh, you know, sure. 
for sure. And this is yeah from the Scott Snyder run on on Batman, which mm-hmm. you know is a uh, is is one that's still you know thought of really highly. Uh, uh, and Batman, you know, Batman's Batman. It's hard not to like. Yeah, I should show the pencils too. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And that it's always it's book. interesting. It's interesting to see, you know, pencils and inks separately. You can sort of you can see what was kept, what was changed, how the pencils were interpreted. Because, you know, normally if the inks are over pencils, you don't get you don't know what it looked like before. Uh, but no, this is super cool. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's nice to be able to compare the two. There were actually things in that for when I was looking at the ink piece that I didn't notice until I saw the pencils. So yeah, and it's interesting the way like in the in the pencil piece you can see the the lines that Capullo drew that were then just sort of shaded over mm-hmm. and that interpreted in ink in, in white over the black of the figure. Like that's a really clever way to ink things like that. And I don't know if that was something they discussed, but if they if they either way, it's 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 smart. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice page. We're growing by Uh let's get some more Kirby. More Kirby uh, next. Mr. Miracle, right? Mr. Miracle. Mr. Miracle and Oberon and I forget the name of this villain. Uh Madame something. I can't remember. Um by Mr. Miracle number fourteen. I, you know, we've talked about this like every time we have a I have a '70s Kirby page, but I love me some '70s Kirby, and things by Mike Royer. You know, as much as I, I'll defend Vince Coletta, I, Mike Royer is the perfect Kirby inker. No, I mean he's those inks are so strong, so heavy, yeah. but I mean it's yeah. perfect for Kirby pencils. I mean it's yeah, it's, I mean, it's the closest to what Kirby's pencils look like. Mm-hmm. There's another one of those that just gets you now, so you don't have to jump back to it later. Uh, another page from the same issue, Big Barda and her Furies. Uh, another just Kirby was the best. But yeah, two, so two two pages from Mr. Miracle, uh, both awesome. I love them, and yeah. that's what they're about because because it's Kirby comic. Somebody smoking a pipe or smoking a cigar, because that's what Kirby did. Yep. Yeah. No, it's it is it's absolutely gorgeous. I really really love this one. Yeah. Now Roy, Royer was definitely the best uh, anchor. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, and you know the '60s people will will stand by Sinnet, and Sinnet's great. It's, it's hard to argue, but Royer was yeah, it was just perfect. Yeah, I agree. And Andy Fish says, Mr. Miracle and the Demon, top of the artistic mountain for me. Yeah, I agree. Good choices, I, I, Andy. Yep, I agree too. I mean, I like all the fourth world titles. I, I you know, I, I'll defend all of them. Uh, and even some of the, even some of the stuff that Kirby did in the seventies that aren't even like particularly good comics. Sure. Just some beautiful drawing, you know, just oh. awesome. I, I always say when in the '70s when I when I saw the books I didn't understand why Kirby was drawing in them and but today I mean I, I love every every bit of it yeah. but as a kid I, I, I didn't understand it you know I did not care for Jack Kirby when I was a kid <laughs> I didn't get it I didn't get it at all it was also the '80s and the stuff he was doing that was new mm-hmm. it was not great but. right right exactly but I mean every, it's it's funny how your uh, your impression of uh, of artists change over time but yeah, as a kid I just I just wanted John Byrne to draw every book that was coming <laughs> out you know in the 80s or late 70s so what that's, do I know that's fair yeah rich, rich says he still prefers Sinat, and that's okay rich we're, we're, we're all allowed to disagree apples and oranges mm-hmm. uh, I just said it's great no no you'll get no no argument from me there mm-hmm. I agree Destroyer duck. Uh, all right, so what do we got next here? It's uh, another uh, Ramita Jr. Ramita right? Jr. Uh, Conqu- Contest of Champions. So there's a story about this book that I was not aware of until until we got this page. So it, on the top of the artwork, it says uh, Marvel Treasury Edition, uh, which is not what Contest of Champions was. Right. So the story, so this came out in 1982. The the story that became Contest of Champions was originally drawn in 1980 
to be a treasury to celebrate the Winter Olympics in 1980. Winter? Winter. Summer? Maybe Summer Olympics. I don't uh, recall. But I, this, I this, this it might have been familiar for some reason. It was, no, it was definitely not the Winter Olympics because the, the Winter Olympics were in New York. It was the Summer Olympics in 1980. But those were in Russia. And we did not participate in them. So, and then the Russians didn't participate in the Winter Olympics in, in, you know, that were here. So the, the Marvel, I think, very smartly said, why are we publishing a book to celebrate an Olympics that the Americans are not yeah. here? So the story <laughs> was kind of wise put, choice on their part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the story was kind of put on put into the into the files and then eventually released in 1982 as Contest of Champions. Uh, and it kind of and they just removed all references to the Olympics from the story. Mm -hmm. uh, which is actually really interesting. And it's, you know, and it's another one really good you know, drawing by Ramita and uh, it's a great page, you know, I Daredevil and Iron Fist uh, fighting in the snow. Cuz you know, the Summer Olympics. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, great, 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 there, great there. Daredevil drawing by Ramita. This is and this would be well before Ramita Jr was a Daredevil artist. Uh, that was until the like, late 80s when, when, when Rita Jr. was drawing Daredevil. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, potentially the earliest for me to Daredevil. But I'm not going to hold me to that either because I have no idea. Right. You're just speculating right now. But that's, no. I get it. I get it. I would have liked to have seen Iron Fist throw a snowball and cover Daredevil's <laughs> face and have him, have him wonder why he was still getting uh, his, his budget. <laughs> that would actually uh, have been very clever. It would have. I would have. I would have. And, and that might actually happen in the story. I don't know. <laughs> I'd, actually, I'd have to go actually read it. <laughs> uh, Rich James, it's a Stephen Platt snowball because it went splat. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's, let's move faster because it's going oh, to Yeah, it is good. It time, see, when we start talking, we're talking about are we? This, this is all what right. Happens. More of John B. Sema. We sold the cover to this issue in our last auction. This is uh, Fantastic Four 126, the origin retelling. So this is a uh, Fantastic Four fighting Mole Man. All four of them. Mole Man, Mole Man. Yeah, just I love this this panel. The Mister Fantastic getting all stretched, so getting all stretchy, and twisted around in Mole Man's staff. Uh, I love this period of Bisema. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, following up Kirby on Fantastic Four couldn't have been easy, but I think that the, they made the only choice they could have. By having Yusema do it, it made sense. Mm -hmm. Sure. And yeah, this was the first retelling of, like, full retelling of the origin, I believe. Like, that wasn't just like a quick, you know, hey, this is how we got our powers kind of thing. It's like the whole issue was just a retelling of, of the story from the issue one. And except they have costumes this time. Well, it is nice, and if you want to have, uh, I mean, Mole Man's just the the epitome of, of the perfect oh, villain right. on a page. If you want to get something cool with have, have I mean, if it's not going to be Galactus, Mole Man is a is a good se second choice there. Or, yeah, Mole Man, Doctor Doom, those that yeah, would be like Doctor Doom. Thing. All right, I'll throw Doctor Doom in there too. <laughs> but in, in it inks here, over Pisama, because it's yeah, full of It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it really is. Uh, let's see, we got, this is Ron Friends again. This is uh, from What If Number 105. This is the first appearance of Spider Girl. My friend, Spider Girl and, and uh, Goblin, probably. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is cool. 1980, 1998. So interesting friends. Inked by Bill Sienkiewicz. Um, this is another one that, yeah, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a, these first appearance pages, you know, it's, it's always hard to say what's going to happen to them, but this is a good one. I think uh, people think it. Yeah, it's interesting. Usually, I mean, Sienkiewicz, it's not like he's not overpowering the inking on us. I mean, no. I, I, can, I can tell it's him. You know, from just some of the what the line work like in her hair right there, but, sure. but yeah, this is nice. Sometimes you know, like on Sal or something, he, he it was just too much. But uh, this is pretty nice. I like yeah, that's it. another one from Tom DeFalco's collection that's never uh, never been for sale. Before. Wow. Uh, let's see, you guys so, put a lot of work into this auction. I know. 
it's uh, Fear number 24. It's uh, Morbius by Pete Craig Russell, Jack Abel, and that's Blade. Uh, so Morbius and Blade, great last panel. So this is Blade's first appearance outside of Tomb of Dracula, this, this, this issue. Uh, and, you know, having him appear in a Morbius comic book just makes sense. But uh, really cool. I really liked Pete Craig Russell's work from the 70s. Um, I don't know, I think I realized how much I did until we started getting some pages. We have mm -hmm. some Sun of Nathan pages by Russell in this auction as well. Uh, like really cool, like totally different from what the style that he sort of evolved into. Sure. But again, cool. like the very 70s kind of dark, um, like Bronze Age art. Like, and I like it a lot. And I really love that last panel of Morbius. I hear there was a movie. I don't know. I, I don't know. The less said about that, I think the better. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch it, uh, you know, on a plane. So it's uh, everybody I know who's watched it watched it on a plane. <laughs> I guess nobody wanted to go see it in the theaters. Uh, when, we yeah. flying, when we were flying to, was it WonderCon? It might have been WonderCon. I was flying to WonderCon with Vincent, and he uh, he was watching it, and I was just watching him watch it. It was just like like ugh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he was critiquing it for the rest of the plane. Uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't as good as you as you would have hoped it would have been. That's right, for sure. let's, let's, let's move through some stuff here. Yeah, more John Buscema Thor splash. Uh, Thor getting walloped. That's exciting. Oh, that's, a, that's a good one from uh, um, N. That's nice. This piece is awesome. This is Nick Bradshaw uh, Spider Man variant cover? It's a Cosmic Ghost Rider variant. Uh, I think this drawing is just great. Just, just great, great drawing. I don't know anything about Cosmic Ghost Rider, but this makes me think he's cool. Oh heck yeah! Well, Bradshaw, man, his style. Yeah, and it's it's the Spider-Man so drawing. Spider-Man is drawn great. The bike is drawn great. Uh, just, I mean, it's 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 surprisingly good. I'm I'm impressed by this. this is this is a good cover. Well, there's a there's a few cosmic ghost rider collectors out there that I'm there, sure. there are for sure. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, oh, this one I got to take out of the bag. This cover is great. Oh. That's three covers by Bart Sears. Wow. From uh, Justice League versus Suicide Squad. This was a I think like a store variant connecting covers, mm -hmm. but yeah, they're all included and. Bart Sears is another guy that's been around forever and still great. But, uh, Harley Quinn and Wonder Woman all over this. Uh, yeah, very cool. But yeah, you get three covers for the price of one, or you know, three covers for the price of three, however you want to look at it. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, I'm, doing an interview, I'm doing an interview with Bart Sears in a few weeks. Oh, yeah? yeah, that's cool. That's um, really nice. Uh, okay, you got a. Steve Epstein, Captain America number six. This is from the issue that introduces the Winter Soldier. Uh, Cap and somebody. But nice capping costume. Steve Epstein was just great. This whole series was great. Um, we sold a page on Dueling Dealers last night for, uh, from that same issue. What did it go for? 12000 Nice. Did it have Winter Soldier in it? Yes. It was yeah. uh, uh, page one. So it was ah, the, cool. yeah from that issue so it was uh definitely yeah no but i i, I totally agree with you Epting man his, his uh, stuff is just i really that might you know it, it's it's one of the few like modern superhero stories that i read that i think really like will stand the test of time it, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you've been reading comics for six months or 30 years just good comics yeah no i completely uh, agree with you. I, these I are a couple of these are production covers from Marvel's Greatest Comics. So they're stats of they're stats of Fantastic Four covers, but both of them have alterations on them. This this one extensive alterations. Uh, all the alterations on both of them are by John Romita Sr. Uh, but these are the this is the the you know the production artwork that the covers were printed from. So the stats are all original. The art is mostly stat. But there's alterations on both, and 
by John Romita, which is, and this is a Silver Surfer versus the thing, which is awesome. So yeah, not not the original Kirby art, but still the original production art. Very cool. Much much more affordable than the original Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I agree. <laughs> uh, so splash page from Spectacular Spider Man one sixteen. Yeah, by Buckler. Uh, Black, Black Cat. Yeah, Buckler and McLeod. Uh, very eighties guy with a mohawk. Picking a fight with Black Black Cat. Uh, Another page. There's another page. There's another page. Spectacular 116 by Butler. Black suits fighting all over the place. Black yeah. hat again. Like I said, you guys have been really busy, Micah. I know. It's Lois Lane dressed up like an Indian, <laughs> uh, which is actually more innocent than it appears. She's actually the issue is her learning about the plight of the Native Americans and actually defending them, and gets her in a lot of trouble because people don't like that she's defending the Native Americans. So. It's uh, it appears potentially worse than it actually was intended to be. Superman is is a paste up, but it's an original art paste up, and underneath it is another different drawing of Superman. This is by Dick Giordano. Huh, uh, that's interesting. Cool. Uh, Nineteen. They're like shifting the characters, you know, or something. But it's so yeah, it's 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 it is sort original. Of something something awesome. about it that he didn't like, and instead of fixing it, he just redrew it. Basically. Yeah. Right. But it is not not a stat. It's a an original art based up. Uh, it's another X Men, John Romita Jr. X Men. Um, this is what does I forget the guy's name? It's Warlock's dad in space. It's uh, from Michigan 192. 192. Uh, and at the bottom here, Professor X uh, walking uh, with a great nudie die panel at the bottom. Again, a great period of the X Men. More Ron, more Romita Jr. X Men. Uh, this You're makes me sad. Sad. about that. Oh, Cliff Chang, Paper Girls. Yeah. Wow, Cliff that is beautiful. We unfortunately canceled Paper Girls. Uh, but the covers are great, and this is a memorable one. It's Cliff Chang doing his riff on the classic Lord of the Flies book cover mm -hmm. that everybody wrote. Oh, yeah, and yeah, this is, a, this is a memorable cover. I love the art in this book, I love the comic. I really like the show. I'm upset about it. But we always have the comic, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, we got here, see Kevin's Moon Knight. Moon Knight number 18. Little Moon Knight fighting uh, somebody. But see Kevin's, you know, we feel, you know, it's hard to top. Another page, the uh, splash page from issue 18. Just a bunch of goons. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, very cool. Uh, the cover to Marvel Comics presents number 127 by James Fry, the Wolverine and Black Widow. Really nice, like graphic cover. Also, Speedball, who was probably on the back cover. <laughs> uh, but no, I like this cover a lot. I, I like that the graphic, you know, the Wolverine's mask making the splitting the image. It's nice. It's a well designed cover. Yeah, I always like the Marvel Comics Presents covers. And you know, yeah, the fact that we got the back cover as well. I mean, those, yeah. were, those are fun. The Ron Lim variant cover to Guardians of the Galaxy 146. This was originally a, it was, it was when Marvel was doing their like homage lenticular covers. So this was a lenticular cover with, you know, we turn it one way, it's this, turn it the other way, it's the cover of Infinity Gauntlet number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was it printed on its own as the second printing. Um, so, but it's cool that it's like a mirror, of, it's sort of a mimic of the Infinity Gauntlet 1 cover. Uh, just pretty cool cover by Lim. Lots of, lots of characters. This title is a replacement. It's a, on an overlay, it's not on the actual artwork. Uh, but yeah, it'll, you have know, some group. You got, you got all the modern guardians, Rocket, and everybody, uh, Drax and whoever. Uh, but uh, I like that. I like this cover. It's, it's nice, and uh, yeah, I think that's a nice that's that cover. Cool. I I like that one. That is a yeah. good one. You can't go wrong uh, with anything by Ron Lim. You cannot. But speaking of things you can't go wrong with, <laughs> Harry Smith, Superman. Very true. 
too big. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, this is one of my favorite all time. But yeah, uh, Barry Smith works out there. It's it pretty, is my uh, absolute favorite Barry Smith art. Yeah. And uh, these again come from Tom DeFalco, so they've never been for sale. Man. Uh, but look at the detail that he put into the backgrounds in these pages is insane. Like it's 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 almost like otherworldly. Like Barry Smith was, uh, it still is, you know, you know, one of, uh, oh, hello. <laughs> hey, guys, I just want to say hello for a second. Um, Captain America Shield. Micah is doing a great job here, I know, but I want to say hello and thank everybody who came to the conventions this summer. And we had a great time seeing you, and thank you all for all your bidding. And your interest in this auction, I think, is one of our best offerings as of yet. Uh, we're so proud and really excited about it. And uh, can't wait to see the results next week and all the happy winners. And, well, you know, there, there's, it's going to be a really great uh, great time. Um, what, are you, what are you talking about right now? Embarrassment. Um, you know, as a, kid, as a kid, I didn't appreciate that machine, man. It was too complex for me. And as I got older... And started really understanding the detail of it and how much work you put into it. Uh, Mind blowing. It's 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 pretty phenomenal. It's finally coming into its own in terms of collectability. It's true. It's true. Well, I think the art's great. It's great art. Yeah. Um, I'll leave you guys to it. Bill, hope you're doing great. Oh, I am, Vince. It's good seeing you again. Same here. Same here. Again, thank you for everything you're doing for us and uh, to all the collectors in the community out there. We really appreciate everything uh i know i'm seeing all the the, the notes and, and comments it really means a lot to us we've really been working hard at this developing and building our auctions and i think it's really starting to pay off in a big way we've got just some magic pieces in this auction no and price problem. points for everybody also it's it's, it's I've really told numerous times you guys really worked hard on this one there's a there's so much uh, great material so, so hard and we can <laughs> see what we're going to get for the next one the next one already has some great stuff in it. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a couple months. And right, for, for everybody who's seen today's episode of Shield, that is an official Avengers Shield. <laughs> Avengers. Oh, I have to go watch it. <laughs> and if you haven't watched it, that joke will make sense eventually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and anybody out there, if you're looking for a really cool kind of superhero -y comic book show on Netflix, watch The Imperfects. It's hysterical. They have the powers of a succubus, a banshee, and a chupacabra. <laughs> All right, I'm out. Take it easy, guys. To answer the question, these Machine Man pages are both from issue one. Oh, that's right. I did see that one from Brett. Yeah, yeah. issue one for sure. But yeah, that that, that page is the one. Uh, is page twenty is just yeah. wow, just it's gorgeous. Fantastic. I got it. And, uh, and again, like you just said, never on the market. Uh, never before, since they've been into Falco's uh, hands. Next. Uh, Alan Davis page from the uh, Excalibur special, the very first Excalibur comic. Uh, I loved this comic when it came out. I still like it. This page is Megan, basically Megan finding out her home has been ransacked. Uh, pictures of the X-Men. So you got, actually, this is all actual drawings. So you got a nice panel of the uh, of the X-Men from that time period. Mox arm, everybody. Uh, I love this comic. I loved it. I read it a lot when it came out. Big fan. I'm still uh, getting into it because I didn't read it when it came out. But I'm learning I'm the error of my ways. I'm a fan of the, you know, the 80s funny Justice League. And the mm -hmm. Excalibur was sort of Marvel's answer to that, sort of like the funny X-Men comic. And I like both of them. Another page is from Excalibur number 60, or I'm sorry, number 48. So Rachel Summers uh, being all Phoenixy. Also cool. Also Fantastic. my favorite. Uh, let's see, this is, uh, this one has come out too, because it's two pages. This is from the giant sized werewolf by night. So half half man, half wolf. And I don't know why it was drawn this way and not a normal double spread, but it's awesome. And yeah, you know, it's, see, yeah that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and again, TV show will be out in what, like a month? By right. the young, young Montano. Montano is a. I don't know. I've never heard of Excuse my, my uh, ignorance on, on this, but good drawing, cool comic, great spread. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. Very nice. Uh, 
It's got some Joe Maderera, vintage Joe Maderera X Men. The uh, X Men one, uh, X Men three thirty. Joe Maderera into by Tim Townsend. It's a uh, Archangel and Wolverine. Uh, classic Maderera. Yep. From uh, uh, it's it's basically, basically, you know, this this style became very sort of omnipresent in comics in sort of the late nineties, early two thousands. But Joe Maderera did it first. And yeah, he's still, you know, still one of the best at it. Uh, very, very, very instantly recognizably matter. Uh, let's see, you got more John Bisema Avengers. Uh, that's from uh, issue 288. 288. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is uh, Buckler. This is from Astonishing Tales number 27. This is the third, third appearance of. Deathlock. Uh, really nicely designed page two. I like pages like this. Uh, yeah, Deathlock uh, fighting at the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, that is really nice. Um, yeah, these, these early Deathlock pages don't turn up all that often either. Uh, so it's really cool. This is uh, Joel Jones, Batman number 34. This is from Tom King's run on Batman. Uh, a really nice cover. Uh, Batman being surrounded by ninjas. Ninjas don't like superheroes, apparently. <laughs> They're very expendable, though. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they are indeed. Uh, let's see, Morbius, Morbius number 23 cover. This is uh, Nick Napolitano. A uh, nice kind of, you know, very 90s, 90s Morbius cover. But it's a good graphic with Spider-Man on it. It's like a nice, nice, nice image. Again, I hear he was in a movie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an excellent Cerebus page. It's from the Cerebus 112, 113 double issue. Um, but this beautiful drawing, it's like all Cerebus in the rain sort of stripping himself of his of his gear, his vest, and his necklace, and his sword, and sort of abandoning his sort of, you know, issue 112, 113 is a, it's an intermediary issue. To, it's between two, between two larger stories. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's been a long time since I've seen a service page as, as pretty as this one. That's oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, Trad Moore from his Suicide Squad story. Uh, the the layout and drawing on this page is just 100% Trad. It's, uh, it's it's interesting and visually dynamic, and the drawing is fantastic. Uh, maybe the most popular modern artist uh, value-wise and desirability-wise. I can't imagine anybody whose work is more sought after than his right now. That's, you know, current. I would agree. Uh, there, there are uh, many Treadmore fans out there in, yeah. uh, in our audience. Great, great Harley Quinn image in the middle. Uh, yeah, and he's great. I mean, I think he deserves it. You know, it's nice to see good art rewarded. Uh, Bart Sears again. This is the cover to Wizard Magazine number number sixty. Uh, piece is signed Whitman because because uh, even in the even in the nineties, uh, people had contractual obligations and he couldn't sign his real name. Uh, although I can't imagine an artist with a more instantly recognizable style from that time than Bart Sears. Mm -hmm. You should ask him that when you talk to him. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And so pencils and to be pencils and inks both by Sears, but he did them separately, so they're both included. Yeah, you know, when I did a pre-interview with Bart, and he said that whenever he was inking himself, he, he did very tight uh, prelims on 11 by 17, and then he lightboxed the inks on another page. So there's, he, he was telling me he's got like complete issues with some books still that are out there just because he, uh, of, the pen, of the pencil side, you know, not the ink side, because, and, and they're just like what you see right there, really, really tight. Yeah, so, that, that's interesting. I would uh, actually be curious to hear him talk about that. Yeah, um, yeah. This is an interesting piece. This was so. This is the splash page to tell us on a sixty-one, but this is not the published splash page. This, the the when the person bought the page, he, the art was a, was pasted up, and he was like, "Well, what's underneath it?" So he pulled up the artwork, which is by Ditko, uh, Ditko and Ayers, I want to say, but I, I could be wrong about the inker. And underneath that was this unpublished version, like partially inked version of the of the splash page, like laid out slightly differently, but same content essentially. 
And this was drawn by Dick Rockwell, who was a Golden Age comic artist, but more interestingly, the nephew of Norman Rockwell, which That's is cool. Amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah, so this was underneath the published artwork. All, all of this text stuff is recreated. Uh, the only original thing here is this piece down here in the corner with the art, art credit. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, really interesting, like a really interesting piece of comics history. And, you know, Norman Rockwell's nephew. Well, that's a first for me. Yeah, I didn't even know he was a person who drew comics. I never, yeah. I never yeah. aware of it at all. Uh, Tim Sale X Men twenty ninety nine cover, uh, definitely not the Joker. I don't know why you would even think that was the Joker. I mean, that's really foolish. I think it doesn't look anything like that. Yeah, no, nothing like that. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know why anybody would say that. Uh, but if you want a Tim Sale of a drawing that was almost the Joker, <laughs> here's an X Men twenty ninety nine cover. Uh, this is. Almost definitely a recreated logo. I believe it's on overlay. Uh, this is Jim Starlin, Man Thing, Fear Number Twelve. Oh wow! I love Starlin when he was on, on Man. I mean, I love Starlin in general, but no, he hit sure. Man Thing so darn cool. He did. He did. That is nice. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to burn through some stuff. No, you should. Uh, all right. So now we're going to talk about these for just a minute. There's like six of them, five of them. These Ditko, Ditko Machine Man pages. So, four. Four of them? There's only, oh, yeah, there's four of them. Uh, one each from issues eight, so it's, it's like 15, 16, 18, and 19. Again, these come from Tom DeFalco, so these have never been for sale. And what's interesting about that is that, so DeFalco got his pages because he wrote them, and the rest of the pages all went to Ditko because Ditko, these are all penciled and inked by Ditko. And uh, so Ditko never sold any. So these pages are very, very rare. Pencils and inks by Ditko. This page has the Hulk and Wendigo on it. Uh, she Man. I mean, these pages, they're, they're beautiful. I, I love Ditko and he inks himself. Even in the 70s, they're, I think they're great. It's, it's just pure Ditko. There's a lot of really great Ditko stuff in here. Um, these are rare. Very cool. And not like rare in that, like, well, they're just, they've never been on the market before. It's like, not only have they never been on the market before, but there's almost no Ditko Machine Man pages that have ever been on the market. And the pages that have, you kind of have to wonder how they got out of Marvel's office because mm -hmm. the pages were returned to Ditko and then these pages went to DeFalco and he never sold any. You know, right. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying. There's, I, I've seen a couple of pages that have gotten out, but how they got out, I have no idea. They, maybe. I don't know, maybe they were gifts. Uh, this is a this is a double fat spread of the Phoenix to Mexican Adventures. Uh, you can trust me, it's a double spread. I don't have time to pull everything out. <laughs> uh, this is Bob Brown, Daredevil from issue 121. Very nice Daredevil page, Daredevil and Black Widow. Very nice. This is uh, got a couple bit Simon Bisley Lobo pages from the Lobo Christmas special. I mean, 1990, 1991, Bisley, Lobo. I mean, what else? That's it. What else do you need? So there, I have very few comics are cooler than early 90s Bisley, Lobo. Oh, I, I agree. Uh, that is nice. Yeah. The Buckler Daredevil issue 101. A lot of Daredevil. The Daredevil Flying, Daredevil Action, Daredevil, Daredevil Vision. Uh, is a splash page to Battlestar Galactica number 10. This is um, Pat Broderick. Just a nice splash page of the Battlestar Galactica and some Vipers. Very cool. This is a beautiful piece. This is a gray wash painted, covered a D. It's the DC versus Vampires by Miko Suyan. I don't know. Swayan. Swayan. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah, just a really good cover, and it's like an homage to Brian Bowen's Robin number one cover. Yeah, Nico's Mika, really talented. That's, yeah, that's really, really good. Really good. This, this, this is a recreation on an overlay. Yeah. Uh, the published, so in the published, this Robin, that's Arsenal, I think. But in the published cover, standing back there is Nightwing. And we have that drawing here that was patched in to the. Uh, the all right. So they're both included. Uh, but yeah, really beautiful cover. 
And this is more John Buscema Avengers. Or we were not we're not short on Buscema Avengers. It's another yeah. another, modern, another homage cover. This is Raphael Albuquerque. Uh, this is Rob the Robin spoiler special. This is Albuquerque doing the classic Infantino Batman and Robin. Mm-hmm. Like, really, like, this is a great. This is another great cover. Albuquerque is a great artist. Uh, and you know, if you're going to homage Batman, a Batman and Robin cover, I mean, this is the image. And a really well done, a really well done version. Uh, a couple of J.G. Jones before Watchmen comedian covers. Uh, oh, more wash, gray wash painted, one with some color in it. Uh, but J.G. Jones is great. Uh, and he did really good work on these on these two covers. Uh, nice. They're, they're excellent. I love J.G. Jones, man. He, yeah. he is so talented. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Mark Bagley, New Warriors interior page. So some more New Warriors for you New Warriors fans. Uh, this is another double spread from X Factor '96. Um, basically, the whole X X Factor team from that time period. Trust me, it's a double spread. You can see the whole thing on the website. Uh, Howard Chaikin um, hardware cover from Milestone from the '90s. This is uh, a, this is actually Chaikin doing a little riff on the cover to Action Comics number ten. So it's like a class and all golden age re- a golden age on our five years taken. Excuse me, my pile fell over. <laughs> the vigilante title page by Mike Sikowski and Dick Giordano. It's a really cool, really cool uh, title page. Uh, Kent Williams from Haddock Wolverine. It's one of my favorite my one of my favorite comics of the nineteen eighties. Another comic I, I could talk. I had before. a feeling that would have been one of your favorites, man. <laughs> uh, and the Havoc Wolverine and Electro Assassin, I think, combined to change comics or the idea of what comics were. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing I could talk about for a long time, but I'll leave that for another show. <laughs> uh, maybe the most, the most well drawn page of art in the whole auction, drawn by Tom DeFalco. <laughs> Beautiful. You didn't know Tom could draw. But now <laughs> From the from the humor issue of what if it's you know what if Silver Surfer, White Tiger, Knight Rider, Iceman, and Moon Knight fought Wendigo in a snowstorm, and what if Black Panther fought the Shroud in a coal mine? <laughs> I mean, and uh, I think where it's at now, even price wise, proves that other people think it's funny too. He did a really good job with those blacks in that last panel. He did exactly like spotted perfectly. <laughs> I, think my, I think my description of that page calls it the most well drawn piece of comic art I've ever seen. <laughs> So clean. Uh, yeah. the Kurt Swan Superman splash page. It's awesome. Oh, and that's nice. This, uh, Superman 382, inked by Dave Hunt. Uh, the page from Marvel Queer number 18. It's the fourth iron, fourth appearance of Iron Man. And this page is the first panel page appearance of Joy Meacham, who was a major character in the Iron Fist uh, TV show. So another first appearance page, and this is her first actual page appearance. Uh, so that's cool. By uh, Larry Hama Pencils, Jeff Jeff Giordano. Cool. Very cool. It's uh, Gil Kane, Gil Kane in Humans, in Humans number seven. Also cool. Uh, bear with me. I'm I'm getting through this as quickly as possible. Uh, page from Hawkman number one, from uh, the Silver Age Hawkman number one by Murphy Anderson. The nice like chapter title. Uh, super cool. Slice up Murphy Anderson. Uh, yeah, nothing not to like about that. Even the little the little Hawkman head up at the top is not a stat. It's an original drawing. The bull and the hawk are all up here. Oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, you got the yeah. hunters at the bottom. It's a great page. I really love yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, a more modern Bisley cover. This is from uh, Space Bastards. Nice Bisley painting, modern Bisley painting. And we have one other, oh, not of the Sema Avengers, a Jim Mooney Avengers. Also cool. Scarlet Witch, Vision, uh, issue 179. Uh, cool. Uh, let's see. More Jim Mooney. Jim Mooney from uh, about 15 years earlier from Supergirl backup from uh, Action Comics number 304. Really beautiful, like, Mooney doing the sort of 
Silver Age DC style, which I, I'm a big fan of. I like I like these pages a lot. Uh, more Alan Davis from uh, from 2000 AD. This is from the uh, Dr and Quinch stories that Alan Moore wrote. So this is Alan Davis and Alan Moore. Uh, very cool. These pages are rare. Uh, this is more in humans. In humans by Keith Pollard. This is from issue 10. Uh, so Gene Colan, Klaus Jansen, Howard the Duck, and this is, and this is from the issue where Howard the Duck uh, dresses up like Son of Satan, <laughs> which is funny. Yes. And I love Colin, the Colin Jansen team. I'm a big fan. This is a uh, Phil Jimenez cover to Angela Asgard's Assassin. So that's Angela from Spawn. That's like Neil Gaiman's Angela. Uh, so there's two versions. I think the, the two drawings were combined for the published cover. So they're both included. One is inked. Uh, they're both inks. One is inked over pencils. One is inked over blue line, but they're both included. The, and then the published cover is sort of like a combination of the two drawings. Uh, let's see, and then we got a couple of Gil, of uh, Gene Colan Tomb of Dracula pages. Uh, one from issue five and one from issue twenty-seven. Both uh, both pretty great. Yeah, they are. I mean, I, I love Gene Colan. So Al Mornier, fantastic. Yeah. Oh wow. But yeah, and then you know, it's like great, like Dracula close up with the bat. It's, it's, yeah, they're just. Uh, got some more things here. Uh, Basil Wolverton, one of his like 30s uh, comic strip samples, like the Woozy Whipper comic. So Wolverton, you know, I don't know. Wolverton is one of the greats, one of the all time greats. He's maybe more known for the artist he influenced than for this work he did himself, but I don't know that that's fair. I think he's, you know, he was one of the first uh, really great humor illustrators of comics. I mean, this is from the 30s. I don't think I've ever seen anything that early from uh, him before. Most of the early stuff you see is his like science fiction illustrations. Yeah. Those are all very huh. uh, Tony Tony Moore. Um, Unmistakable. So they're, yeah, they've covered a Victorian undead number one. They're very much in his Walking Dead mode. But a very cool cover. There's zombie Sherlock Holmes. Uh, yeah, I mean Tony Moore could draw zombies. That's for sure. Uh, Cameron Stewart, um, Marvel Adventures Spider-Man cover, Spider-Man and Fin Fang Foom. Uh, it's not a fair fight there. No, but Spider-Man seems to be holding his own. I mean, he's not swallowed yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a really nice cover by Cameron Stewart. Again, recreated titles on an overlay, but uh, looks really nice. Yeah. I, like, I like Cameron Stewart. I'm a fan of his work. Uh, Maybe the biggest mouse card drawing you'll ever see. I don't know if you're all David Peterson or, right there. there yeah. or David Peterson, but he draws regularly very small. It's a nice, large, painted um, painted illustration of the character Piper from Mouse Card. Beautiful, beautiful drawing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have never seen a, a, a Peterson uh, drawing this big before. It, I was surprised. He's great. He's a great artist. I have. I have a piece by him in my country. So Pablo Marcos doing a recreation of a uh, George Perez Avengers drawing. For, this was drawn recently for um, the Heroes Convention program. But uh, we had a nice, Pablo Marcos is great and doing a nice little, uh, little tribute to George Perez, which is always appreciated. But another very cool, very good illustration. Classic Avengers team. Uh, the Eduardo Rizzo, it's a Blade Runner illustration. There's a fair amount of Rizzo in the auction, so if you take a look at the, the website to see the rest of it. But the, Rizzo's great. Uh, yeah, and this is just this is a very cool illustration. You know, Deckard and Chris from Blade Runner. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, early, this is some, uh, yeah, this is 1949 Alex Toth from the Dale Evans comic. So this might be the earliest Alex Toth original I've ever seen. And it's in the unmistakably Toth when you look at the faces. It's, it's got that golden age look to it, but it's still very Toth. You look at the... Uh, sure. No, that, no, that is nice. 
the um, the space the space down here. This guy is very toasty. All the yeah, I mean, he was you know he was one of the best artists who ever drew it. I mean, one of the best graphic you know illustrators who ever drew comics. Uh, Mike Zek, Master of Kung Fu, Master of Kung Fu 59, six is Zek's second issue. Nice drawing, the classic 70s Master of Kung Fu. Uh, Sanford Green, Power Man and Iron Fist number five. Another, like, another, you know, really nice, like, popular modern artist who's getting, oh, yeah. getting recognition for doing good work. No, nope. yeah. I've, always, I've always admired his work. Yeah, no, very nice. This is a nice, nice cover. It's funny. Uh, I like, I like art with a little bit of humor in it. You know, especially it, sometimes maybe comics don't have to take themselves too serious. Uh, let's see, the Optimus Prime number one cover by Casey Kahlo. The really, really nice Transformers looking bit of it. It's a very detailed, like yeah, really yeah. precise Transformers. I can't even imagine drawing the Transformers. It just no, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd opt for a different title if I was yeah. going to move away from something. Uh, Corey Smith from Nova. So it's got Ms. Marvel, Nova, Miles Morales teaming up. It's the future of the future of Marvel Comics. Oh, really, the young, the young heroes. Really nice page. Good drawing. The splash. We got a splash page from that, uh, from that same book over here too. Um, somewhere. Where did I put it? Nice we got time for a few more, Micah. I know, I know. I'm trying to double, double I know, man. Double. Hey, just so everybody knows, I, I messed up and didn't book Micah on a, on a night for himself. So that's that's why we did a lot. That will learn, that'll learn you. That will uh, learn me. A couple more. Next time we're, we're going to have a show dedicated to, this, to this. Ridiculously detailed Transformers pieces. Of, of one of these, like a slipcase box art, and the other one of these is a double spread. But, uh, yeah, a lot of Transformers. Um, getting there. Got some alternative art in this auction. Some Peter Bag from from Hate. It's a, a prelim from Seth from from Clyde Fans, mm -hmm. one of the greatest comics of the last ten years. Although he worked on it for twenty. I love Peter's work. I've actually finally featured a few pieces from him on the yeah. Cap Update. I'm trying, I'm trying to get it, get a little diversity in here. <laughs> I, I like diversity. This is Joel Jones from uh, Lady Killers. Mm -hmm. Lady Killer. Nice, like little tribute to the old classic, like um, like uh, romance comic pinup pages, like um, like Katie Keene or um, the other one, Patsy Walker, and stuff like that. But you know, it's nice that you know people still pay tribute to like vintage comics, classic comics. A bunch of really great Doug Wildey. I won't show them all. But a bunch of Doug Wildey, Tarzan, a couple of specialty pieces, one in one in color, one in black and white. And then several pages from uh, from an issue of Tarzan by Wildey, who I think is fabulous. I'm a big big fan of Doug Wildey, and, and not just for Johnny Quest, but I do love Johnny Quest. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, I just want to get to a few more. I'm sorry. Uh, apologies to Nick and Dino. What's uh, that? I said apologies to Nick and Dino for keeping them waiting. They are in the green room. They're watching. <laughs> uh, another Werewolf by Night. This is uh, Don Perlin, Werewolf by Night. Got a great transformation sequence in it. And it's from uh, Civil War Frontline. This is the page where Speedball becomes Penance and then bad things happen. But this is an origin page. It's cool. Um, all right. I think. Gotten to pretty much everything that's important. I mean, there's it's a lot more. It's all important, Micah. It's all important, but everything I want to, you know, I want to make a point to show and discuss. And I can talk about all of it. I can talk about every piece in the auction, but we'd be here for three more hours. All right. Well, you have 412 pieces in this. I mean, how many were in the last one? It, it was. Uh, the last one was, I think, was over 300. Over three, but it, it was not, so not a lot. Not not like low over three. This is, so this right. is about 100 pieces more than the last auction, and it's. Uh, well, I promise not to double book. Uh, <laughs> so again, because I, I, I actually had booked Sean Gordon Murphy literally the day after I interviewed him back in March, and I had it on on the on the wrong calendar. That one. So when I booked you and I double booked it, that's I didn't realize it till ten days before the show that I had. I mean, you know, 
except for the having to rush part. Now, today is better for me than Tuesday. I was on vacation last week. So well, then that worked out. But we will. But from now on, I promise you, I won't. I won't do that again. And you'll we'll, get, we'll have a show dedicated. I will find out what the dates are for the next auction, and we can put that into the schedule yep. uh, next week. That'd but be anyway, awesome. there's there's hundreds more pieces in the auction. Lots of stuff. Lots of good stuff. I want everybody to look at it, and uh, you know, I want I want everybody to be happy. I want the consigners to be happy. I want the buyers to be happy. That's that's my job. I, it's, I'm a I'm a I'm a making people happy person. Well, I hope when you wake up on Tuesday morning next week, you're the happiest guy in New York. And and I'm I'm in the office during the auction, so if anybody's watching the auction and bidding, and has any questions about anything, you can give us a call here. Our number is on our website, and uh, I will be happy to uh, talk to anybody. I like That's talking true. to people. And you're actively office. taking consignments for the next uh, event. Oh, right? and the, the next auction already has some exceptional pieces in it. I will tease. I'll tease a little bit. I'm not going to get it and show it to you because I don't want to get up. But uh, we have a, a complete eight-page Richard Corbin story from, from 1974. Creepy. Creepy 58, I want to say. It's um, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. It's, you know, that ink, that black and white painted Corbin. Uh, it's a werewolf story. It's extraordinary. And um, I can't wait for people to see it. It's, it's wow, wonderful. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, and it's uh, bring it to Baltimore yeah. if you're going. If you maybe that's not a bad idea. I I mean, at least bring maybe the title page, or, you know, just just to show it's 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 really stunning, and it'll be sold as a complete story. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah. I do keeping yeah. it together. Yeah, as short stories, I I think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Keep them together. The longer stories, it's harder. You know, twenty keeping a twenty page story together is difficult. But uh, but. You know, but the short stories I feel like, especially short stories that have been together for 40, 50 years. Or yeah, longer, that's not right. I was just talking about right. one that was broken up recently that was a short story. But I, you know, I, I know how it goes. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes people that I'm sorry, so there's a story that's broken up that's in this auction. It was the consigner's decision to break it up. I, I am, I'm, I'm but the messenger. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I will thank you so much, Bill. Thanks to everybody for watching. And uh, I hope everybody bids the auctions on Monday. It starts at 6. Uh, the art starts ending at approximately 6.15 on Eastern time on Monday. There's like a small group of pulp comp pulps that end before the art, but it's not very many. And uh, then, and then 400 pieces of art. And then memorabilia. The Falco, oh, the, the Falco collection, too, there's a lot of really interesting memorabilia that he gave us. Like vintage T-shirts, like Marvel Company and Marvel NBC Company jackets. Hmm. Um, there's a lot of Archie art from the '70s that we got that we got from DeFalco. Just a ton of Dan DeCarlo covers, uh, some Bob Montana comic strips. Really cool. I can't show everything. Um, there's a lot of Spider-Man comic strips in the auction. There's uh, yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a lot. It's worth looking. Um, I think uh, I, I'm I'm proud of the auction, and I want uh, I want people to to bid. That's what I want. I want people to bid. Bid, 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 uh, bid, bid now, bid often. There you go. Bid no, early, bid I, I think they will. You know, well, you've got you've got a lot of bid activity pre, you know, yeah. uh, prior to the uh, last couple of days of it. So no, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna go well, and and it's a good night to be ending them as well on Monday. And yes, Spider Man Daily, Spider Man Daily by like three different artists. I think there's some. I'm just seeing the comments. There's uh, there's some. I don't know. Look at the auction. There's, there's, there's like you'll find six or seven them. Spider-Man dailies, and uh, they're cool. And a daily color proof signed by Stan. Lee. Well, there, there, there isn't enough stuff signed by Stan out there right now. No, I'm pretty sure he was very stingy with his signature. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, Mike, it's always a pleasure. And, and like I say, when if you've got that date, you know, hit me up with uh, when the next I will, one is. I will. Uh, I, I know it'll be early December. I just need to figure out what the actual uh, right. time is. But I will let you know. And, uh, better. and, I, and you know, I hope uh, I hope everybody takes a look. They will. Monday, Monday the nineteenth, six o'clock Eastern time. All right, and uh, we'll I'll send out a mailing for you guys tomorrow too. Well, no, you know what? It's probably better to wait till Monday, right? Want me to send something out? Or for you? you know, or both. 
or both. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're twisting my arm. Okay, I'll take care of you. I'll send out a reminder email to my list on uh, Friday and on Monday for you. Thank you. Thanks Thank you very much, Bill. As always, always appreciated. You do. Uh, you, you're you're doing God's work. Thank you, Micah. <laughs> All right, man. Have a great night. Great. And uh, apologies to Nick and Dino for eating into your time. Uh, they've already said the word. All right. Have a good one. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. See, that's fun. We, but yeah, I got to give him more time in his own show next time. That's for sure. We uh, we had talked about it, and I just totally screwed up by double booking Sean Murphy. Uh, you know, too too early. That usually that has never happened. I had never booked somebody that early, and I had it on the wrong calendar. And when I talked with Mike at Heroes, when we scheduled it. I didn't have the right calendar in front of me, so my fault. But so tonight we're going to do a extra special, never before tried heritage recap with uh, with two guests, and we're not going to follow the usual format. Uh, the three of us have picked artwork that we are going to uh, to review specifically for tonight's event. Not 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 speaking, you know, not not following any guidelines other than well, there are actually some guidelines. And I, but let me bring my my two guests on, Dino Mauricio and Nikki. Nikki B. Dynamite loves comic comics hey, and Nick. art. My goodness. That's hey, a mouthful, Bill. Nick. Hey. Good evening, everyone. Wow, look at you are actually on the floor at Heritage. Yeah, you know, they gave me a special uh, uh treat because my bill was so high. Um, <laughs> Steve <laughs> was the number one buyer this time. Not he at all. Not close. And a Bashara combined. <laughs> Front row seat. And so I, and I bet after seeing Dino's room. He didn't have to co-buy any complete issues. He just said, ah, I'll get it myself. <laughs> not, 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 not close, not close. I had, I had as much fun chasing things as everyone. It's, uh, it's, it's good to be able to share some thoughts tonight though. How are you doing, Nick? Good, good. You guys want to see something really quick, really cool that I just got? What? Oh no. <laughs> Wait, what do we got? Let me, let me, uh, the famous comic book. Trading, trading cards. cards. Oh, 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 nice. I, yes. Oh, that's, I've that's seen Jim Shooter, movie. bottom center. Yep. Jim Starlin. Oh, that's crazy. Look at that. Now, do they I have stats, stats on the back, like their baseball yep. cards? And... Yep. Very nice. I got this from the personal collection of John Romita Sr. Wow. Special, special, Nick. Look at Larry Hama, man. Look at him. He looks as badass <laughs> back then star. as he does today. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Julie Schwartz never changed in 60 years. I mean, I think he was born looking like that. A legend. Uh, Dang. I so, want one of those. That was really, really rare that that came. And I, I got a phone call uh, from Spencer saying, I've got a few things John's ready to get rid of. I was like, there. He's like, don't you want to know what they are? I was like, sure, let me know what they are, but I'm there. <laughs> well, congratulations on that pickup. That's That's pretty cool. I've only it's, seen like small sets of those before, like somebody having like. That's a complete like, set, Nick has. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so, so talking about the format tonight, you know, we we've we've done it one way really forever, and uh, even it, we we had planned to uh, just do something different tonight because we were making it a part of the calf update, and, I, and what we what we decided to do is pick 15 pieces each, and uh, we're going to let each person go through their 15 pieces and kind of give. Uh, uh, give their views on it. We can we can chime in where where we see fit or not, and uh, listen to the stories. But I thought Dina, what, you would be a good person to start tonight. I, I'm a guinea pig for a lot of calf stuff. Yes, right? so, you are, but you're 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 good at this. You you, you exude <laughs> confidence when uh, when we do these. So plus uh, you're on the heritage floor. I mean, look, they I gave start. you your own um, God hammer guy. What that auctioneer? You have your auctioneer. very own auctioneer. He's saying bid, bid more, bid more, but, bid more, uh, bid often, exactly. <laughs> uh, so here, let me pull up the fifteen pieces. Yeah. So you as you're pulling that up, I mean, uh, the, the 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 approach we took, Nick and I were just going to pick fifteen pieces that we thought were interesting to us that we tracked. I mean, I'm going to pick, I'm going to walk through in order the fifteen pieces that I have on my track list. Obviously, with eight hundred lots, I couldn't watch or or really focus on everything, but I picked 15 that that I thought I was going to work my way through the auction and I'll give you some thoughts on what I and what what why I liked it or why it stood out or something and and and, and about price, you know, what my expectations were and my bidding strategy and uh, and 
ultimate outcome. So we'll, we'll, we'll try this out. We'll try to work through these uh, about what, 15 minutes, Bill, to go through the 15 pieces. Yeah, 15 to 20, whatever yeah. feels comfortable, I'd say. Okay, okay. Well, let's start this off. So the first thing, obviously, I had three platinum pieces. The first one, second piece in the whole auction was the Bogdanove and Austin Classic X-Men 17 cover. Um, this was, of course, a reprint of X-Men 111, which has that carnival theme where, again, a great cover uh, of Wolverine with Phoenix and Colossus and... Nightcrawler and Storm. It evokes that that whole story. By the way, if Berkey was here, I'd, I'd point out that the, the story title is Mr. Mike's One Ring Traveling Tent Show. Mr. Mike's. <laughs> but anyway, I, I thought this cover is great. I, I, you know, Bogdanove, I don't know how to pronounce it right, but he's, got, he's famous for the Doomsday storyline and Superman. Mm -hmm. He did a bunch of stuff for the X Factor, which we'll get into next in the auction. But when this came out, I was thinking, okay, these classic X-Men covers are, you know, the Adams ones are really well, but then, then there's Lytle and some of the kind of lower named artists have, have been on this. But this was just a killer image. You know, I, I, I came in here thinking, you know, early in the auction, I actually didn't pay enough attention to this. I, I, I thought this would go around 25 to 35. It was just such a strong image. Um, it actually went at, 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 at hammered at under 20,000, which was a surprise to me. It's probably the, the, the one I regret not bidding on. It was, it's, it would be a nice, nice addition. Again, it's just two great, of us. great, 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 two great of image. Us. But I, I just, I, I, I agree with you. I thought it was. Good I, I mean, early on, I thought you know these platinum pieces usually all the big dollars flow into there, and that leaves mm -hmm. the rest of them for. But I think starting off with 800 lots, you know, the first five or six lots were very tentatively priced. I mean, the Adams went very light. The uh, the, the 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 this one classic as probably could have gone another if it was you know it, it could have gone another ten thousand in my mind if it, if it had if it had a runway so um again I, I just think it was a great piece whoever bought it i think it was well well bought and again i just i just didn't want to you know spend money early in the auction with so many things to track so as a strategy though that that's that that's part of the challenge right because yeah it's a, big, challenge, really like, big challenge you know you've got if you don't mind my asking how many how many pieces were you seriously considering beginning uh, you know as the platinum auction started. i had i had six pieces i was going to bid on yep. two were kind of must-haves or at least you know i'm, I'm going to go strong on the four we we're going to see how that shows up so this wasn't really on that list but looking back i mean i i, I would have gladly gone for this in, in in lieu of another piece so okay who knows but this, this is the way this is the way the auction gets it's not just each lot it's it's the sequence of things and how it times out so um uh, so goodbye for somebody out there. I think. I think it was. A, I think it was a really good buy, and I'm gonna. I I thought it was gonna go for around twenty five to thirty as well. And for the same reason, you probably didn't jump on it. I didn't jump on it because there was so much going on in the auction, and you can only eye so many things. No doubt. Um, but I mean, th this was one of my favorite Bogdanov pieces. It was mm -hmm. just one of my favorite. It was this and one of the FF X Men covers. Oh and, yeah, that was beauty, beauty. Yeah, and then you miss out. I mean, it is what it is. Just to answer David's question real quick, David, you can just go to Heritage, sign in, and you can check out all the prices. You, you go to um, uh, uh, go to sold auction or go, go on the top when you search, hit sold auctions. You can actually pick the auction signature auction, and 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 it'll it'll all come up there. Okay. But I think I this one was David this asking one. about the results or the or when they're uh, in there. I wasn't because he was mentioning Comic Card Tracker too. I, I, I don't, don't know. know. He was uh, he was he was, he wanted to find out how we could find prices for all oh, the pieces. oh the sold. Okay. Oh yeah yeah got yeah. it. Got yeah. It. But yeah. Before turning on to this one, I think this one would have done better with trade dress. I mean, just having classic X Men and the cover would have would have would have stood out as opposed to a splash. I mean, so that's a good point. True. Yeah. All right, next one. All right. As Albert would say next. <laughs> so this one, well, first two big themes coming into this auction that, that are driving high pricing in the, in, in, or three of them actually. One is X-Men, a lot of collectors out there. Mm -hmm. Two is Cosmic Marvel. I mean, Cosmic Marvel's doing very well with not only the, the Guardians of the Galaxy, but the MCU, they've introduced Ego and Eternity and Chaos and Order is gonna be coming out, Kang and Time Travel and Silver Surfer. I mean, these are these are hot, hot areas. So. Um, you know, when this cover came out, this is a What If 32. Uh, Corvax was actually one of the big sagas in the Avengers series. 
Um, but you look at this cover by Bob Layton and Joe Rubenstein. Um, it is one of those kind of trophy wall type covers where it has just everybody, right? It's a who's who of, of, of Avengers. It's got a great Iron Man and there's, there's uh, Eros and, and uh, Death and Captain America and um, Thor. It, it just has a lot of uh, presence to it, you know. Uh, but again, it's uh, it's also not an Avengers cover. It's it's also uh, in an area where it's just it would be hard to value because there's some what if covers that don't quite capture the feel of the original series, and this one seemed to bring a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to a couple of collectors who were interested in it early on, and I, my my thought was, you know, I could see it going 40k easy just because of the demand, but it could. I thought fall under the radar if people were going to focus on the rest of the auction. Um, it actually had strong bidding. It, it went to 35, like right after live started. I inched up and I, it, it went to 50,000, I think, as a, as a hammer, which is pretty high, uh, but but not a surprise given the, 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 the content. And Leighton being an established artist, I mean, I actually know the, the, the buyer of this and I, I think he he knows he probably overpaid by about five or ten thousand, but very happy nonetheless because there's not another cover that kind of covers this type of of uh, you know who's who of cosmic deities and cos cosmic characters. Um, and I, I applaud him for it. It fits his collection really well. Right. Well, they're happy that that's the thing. They they don't mind that they they feel they overpaid a little bit for it. So that's good. I mean, it's a it's a gorgeous cover. And today's premium payment is tomorrow's bargain. <laughs> That's what there they are, say. There yeah. are some uh, dealers that say that. <laughs> I, we know a few. Uh, okay, to move to the next one. Yep. All right. But I do. So but I, you know, I should say I do agree with Dino. It went for a strong price, but rightfully so. Um, if there was ever, you know, obviously some of the older what if covers that have realized a lot of money, they were first. They were classic. But Leighton went so all out there that, you know, kind of what Dino's saying is you could feel the magic coming off of it and what made it so special. And it it was the only surprise would have been if that one fell between the cracks and fell under 30,000. I would have had to say, Ugh. yeah, that I would have been a big regret there. Like, yeah. Yeah. But congratulations to the buyer. That's going to be a good, good addition. So this this is uh, the this is tales of the new Teen Titans. So um, again, I, I was this is on my bid list. It was one that I thought I was disappointed. That they had two Titans. They had this tales of the new Teen Titans, and then the, a Teen Titans cover that was in the the, the Saturday set or Friday session. Um, unfortunately, this was in the platinum lot. Typically, the new Teen Titans go for around 25 to 30 percent more than the Tales of the Teen Titans, which was a later series. But this one, I thought, was a, is a standout. It has all the characters in there. It has like that infinity, you know, crisis on infinite Earth feel to it. You know, this is Prez at his prime. Um, I, I really thought this would, and I and I did. I I I, I thought, well, the last two Teen Titans cover went for like 43. I was I was kind of pegging this around 25 to 28. Um, uh, it went to 31. I, I wasn't really ready to make that final bid. I think what I worry about this is it's too many characters. There's like five other allies fighting in there, and all the characters are really small. But again, if you want to prime Perez with all the busy work of, of his Crisis covers, I mean, wow, this 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 one will take it. it it's not exactly a new Teen Titans series, so you have to take a discount for that. But uh, yeah, I, I maybe I should I I I, I would have push to bid more if it were you know really high on my want list but this this was one that that certainly deserved some attention and i think it was again fairly priced uh, one of the best tales of new teen titans covers that are that are there so and and i'll echo what you said i mean this is one that you feel should have been less because it's a reprint series but it's the original series that that um that marv and uh, george did um, just the titling change because then they yeah. went to the Baxter series and you're looking at it thinking it's beautiful, it's Perez, but it's not with the new stories, so it shouldn't be this high. And then after it's over, you're sitting there going, you know, 
that hammer price wasn't so bad. Exactly. So this no. is a theme that this is a theme that Nick and I want to share with everyone. It's like <laughs> when you evaluate art nowadays, you could look at it as a piece of art by Perez in his style at his peak or without having to compare it to what book it came from or what date, right? So art can be a standalone piece and it can be valued as such. So the fact that we're discounting, let's say, a classic X-Men versus an X-Men cover or a Tales of the New Teen Titans versus a New Teen Titans cover. This was a brand new cover that Perez did for that reprint series, almost yeah. very similar to the, the, how they did Marvel Tales and, and Marvel, uh, sure. uh, you know, presents. And stuff. So in a sense, yeah, it, we're starting to kind of de detach, detach the book from the actual art piece itself. And on a standalone basis, wow, you're getting everything that you want Perez for. So good, good, good cover. I thought it really was a really nice example. I, I didn't hit it in my list. Did either of you guys do the Brother Blood Teen Titans? Did either of you pick that as one of your books? No, a, a friend of mine did. He was the underbidder on that one. Yeah. Another, and, another and guy in the chat. That ended up going affordably because I, yes. I, what I heard rumored, and I guess you, you can or cannot confirm it, it's up to you, is that the, the, his computer froze up as he was bidding. Oh. And that's why the Brother Blood actually went for just about this price, if not a little bit yeah, less. Yeah, a little bit less. I, I think the Brother Blood was okay. It was, it was, a, it was a box cover, so your art was only on yeah. uh, two-thirds of the, of the cover. And then no Starfire. And, like, for me, I, I, I want to have Starfire in there. I mean, others yeah. would want to have Robin or whatever, Cyborg. But, I, you know, that, that would be the one that I'd want for the cover. So. Yeah, it just makes you think. I mean, it really makes you think like people were willing to go high. I didn't go after the Brother Blood for the same reason. I thought it was going to get close to 50000 yeah, And I easy. was like, I'm not even going to bother because he's also going to be in season four. Of the he Titans. is. Can you imagine? So Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not even going to bother. Crazy, and crazy. All of a sudden I saw it. I was like, I, I could have consigned something to pay for that. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So again, going on the cosmic theme, you know, I, I, I like this cover a lot. This was of the post Starlin Captain Marvel covers. There are only three space covers. One of them has Thor and Captain Margo fighting in space. That's probably the best of the post Starlin ones. This is the other two of the, of, uh, this is the other one of the three uh, space covers, space background. It's got really nice images of, of, uh, of Captain Marvel, it's got chaos. Um, this one it was hard to judge as well. I mean, these these late Captain Marvel issues were going in the teens a year ago. Um, there, there was one that I mean, even by dealers. So, uh, but this one, this one went for twenty five. Um, I, 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 I bid up for this one. I, I was hoping to get it around twenty four. I won this one. Um, Congratulations. What happened was, yeah, you, you know, you know, pinochle where you try to kind of be the one to, 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 to get up to the top of the bat. Well, I was trying to be the one to get the 20, right? If you get the 20, which sells at 24, then the next jump is bigger. But actually, someone beat me to it. So I'm thinking, I'm sitting here, it was at 24. And I'm like, do I want to, it's at 20, sort of before the premium. Do I want to do the next bid? You know, and I actually thought of that. And I did a cut bid and I won it. And what I think, and a theory to share, is that there's a thing called the prime cut, which is the first cut bid right after a big change. So it's, it's, it's at 5, 10, 20, and 50, right? Mm -hmm. So it really forces the hand of the other person who's bidding. If you're only bidding with if it automatically goes to his or her next bid, that means you know that you're going to lose it and they're going to take it from there and you lost your cut bid. But if, he, if it doesn't, it really makes the other bidder pause and do they want to basically go another full increment for what they did because it gets back they'd have to go from 21 to 22 which would make it a 28 28 000, uh, hammer um so i i you know i was lucky i, I the, the the other bidder uh froze and and i took it so really really happy to get this one i i i like the, this this issue is 79 i read this i i used to have a, a, a when i was in fifth grade i had a group that used to meet in, in 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 the assembly hall before school and we were the chaos club we used to play blackjack and make fun of things and talk sports and stuff but so i thought this was a nice addition anyway good space cover uh, this is a uh, pat, pat broderick who is who, who i have some uh alpha flight stuff from but um the, the interesting pricing wise it's pretty good i think the the splashes two splashes from 61 62 both sold for nine and eleven thousand so this is about 
the covers are usually two to three times splashes and uh, so and, and the panel page is around three to five so you know, six times that for the cover i think is pretty reasonable but you know what honestly i while i think you paid fair market value or like you said maybe a thousand dollars over as captain marvel comes into the marvel universe next year this will just shoot up in value i mean value is probably it's the love of the cover why you bought it but this is definitely one that you paid the fair market value but just in a year let's just say this will go up better than the stock market <laughs> uh, i think so i it's a it's a it's a good example and again just if you want a space background cover there's only a few of them so. yeah yeah, so Dina, no, was this one of the two or, or one of the four? Was this one? This is know? this is one of the four. I mean, this is one of the four. Okay, so uh, it wasn't I'll tell you one the other one of the two primes, but it was no. I'll tell you the the prime is okay. Soon, so, so all right. So and these are kind of going in order. I mean, I'm assuming. Yeah, this is order of the stuff. So I, I again, I thought about and this is by the by this time already. I was like, okay, well, I got everything coming up, but this is coming up. I was trying to push for a bargain didn't get it but uh, you know I, I i decided to pull the trigger because i you know it, it'd be one that's a good fit with, with sure with what i'm looking for i don't have i don't have a cop marvel cover so again it's filling a hole no, you so do. this was interesting this is john basema and mike esposito thor 226 dps a 70s dps of galactus but this is 1974 where because of the paper shortage marvel did dps's on a single page so it's a you know 10 by it's a 10 by 15 page mm -hmm. but it's published as a dps so this kind of again brings to that question is it art or is it a representative of a page because i thought like in my mind at least you know having a a, a dps of galactus who's coming to the mcu ff i love i love the whole thing it, it would have been amazing it's a great image but it was actually published as a dps even though the art itself is a single single page um you know, I think it was, uh, it was, it, it kind of took away from its value. I think, you know, as a, as a DPS, this could have been, I could easily see this at 25 to 30, you know, even 35, if it's the right kind of strong image, full, full figure. But uh, this one as a single one, I think held it down a bit. But you know, again, if you, if you really like the fact that it's a DPS and you can certainly display it with pride as a DPS of Galactus, who's, who's just a awesome, awesome image. Um, I think it's a, it's for 18,000. It's a, it was a, it was a, it was where I expected, I guess. I, I, I wouldn't see it as, a, you know, if this were just a single page splash, Basema, Prime Thor, I mean, 15 would be the floor. So mm -hmm. I, I just thought it was a, okay. I, I, I struggled with that whole published versus uh, DPS versus the art itself, which is a single page. Right. I get you on that one. And it was just an interesting, you know, it didn't last long at Marvel, thankfully. I mean, they were just trying to save money with the yeah. artists, the page rates and everything. But I always found these interesting. I, I liked it when you when there were two pages side by side on a single, you know, it just, it may, it may devalue it in some weird way. But at the same time, I've always wanted to own one of these pages. Uh, and maybe both of you guys have one in your collection, but I've always wanted one just because I just think it's it's an interesting historical piece to talk about. I mean, this would have been a very interesting one to have, but uh I, I probably would have gone for something a little bit less like a like a man thing you know kind of page but i remember there was a man thing page in the weekly auction that had the yeah. alligators on it i really liked that one totally. but it, i could i lost i actually bid on it i tried to win it and i lost it but uh but i want i want something from that only because i like owning pieces that have that kind of historical significance to the hobby right. I just think, honestly, he's got a galactic rider here because he couldn't <laughs> afford another Silver Surfer or Frankie Ray to, you know, be part of it. He's like, geez, I got to save money somehow. <laughs> it, was it is a cool ride, though. That's a cool ride. A very, uh, either that or the Spider-Mobile was so popular <laughs> that Marvel said, let's try it with Galactus, see if that works. Sure. So, okay, so for, for for those of you who who uh, uh, watched my calf cribs, you'd notice one thing missing, which is a Cockrum X Men piece. So this this was my must have. I I, I was uh, I, I liked the page a lot. Um, it has all the characters. It has that central image of the the whole team going forward. It's got Professor X. You got Storm Banshee, which completes the team. You have Thunderbird, who only appears in two issues, and, and you got Professor X. Um, it has the Wolverine, which is good. Um, what I thought was interesting here was um, 
it was when you look at the X-Men, uh, Cockrum, of course, early Cockrum, 94 and 95 uh, were the second storyline, right? Krakatoa was, was X-Men, Giant Size X-Men 1, and the, the Count Nefaria story was the, were the two were the two, uh, two, two issues, 94 and 95. 94 is a premium because it's viewed as the first in the series, and, and those, those are you know, more, more pricey, I think. They're, they're in the, right now in the 60 to, 60 to 65 range for a good A page. Um, this one came up, and I actually was, was, was glad it wasn't, wasn't the platinum area, uh, platinum it, um, bidding. I, I thought it had all the representation of, of the early style of, of Cockrum, the X-Men story. And, you know, for me, it, it's got, it's got Thunderbird, uh, Thunder, Thunderbird who, who ended up dying. So you see the ship that's on the cover of 94, but, you know, I'm, um, as, as, as a fan, my family is a lot of the roots of Native Americans, uh, Native Hawaiians, Native Americans, just having that uh, John Proud star, you know, becoming a warrior. And he's saying he's, He's, uh, he's, he's doing this to save the team. I think it was just great. And I love the, the, the last panel. It says, I've been a loner all my life, an outcast dumped on by everyone I, meet, I met, um, but I'm a man. And I think that symbolically represents what the X-Men theme was. Uh, it was viewed as outcasts that became a team, to, you know, found themselves and, and created a persona around that, you know, uh, con take, uh, um, you know, challenging against the biases that are against them, or the mm -hmm. or the or the uh, you know, uh, prejudices, or anything, and I, I just I just like that as part of the page. Anyway, so I I, I uh, you know I I did I I bid this one to you know at forty two, and I thought that was kind of really reasonable, particularly when the the other page went for about thirty eight, which didn't had only two X Men in it that was in the auction. Um, you know, I, I I I thought it was good 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 value there, and I I, I decided to kind of take it home so no this was definitely the better value for money for two reasons even though the other one went for a little bit less um this was better value for money for everything you just said it's a historic issue it's a turning point in the x-men it's it's reminiscent of the death of bucky and everything else you've got a little bit of that in there and you've got every pretty much every X-Men there and it just stands out and it actually exudes emotion, you know, being a younger reader, mm. reading that for the first time, um, you actually felt Thunderbird actually ready to sacrifice his life. And as the years went by, the fact that he never came back to life, even in new mutants, when his brother came in, um, the way, that story came and the way they uh, presented him, you always felt the loss of Thunderbird. You always had that emotional state. And that is the power of Chris Claremont scripts and Dave Cockrum art. So I, I think you got one of the best pages in the entire auction. So congratulations. I'm glad, glad to thanks thanks Nick. I really really needed that. I, I I kept on waiting and waiting for a Cochran page that that checked the boxes for me, and the ones that did were always beyond my grasp. So this one this one fell in. Nice you were really stuff. patient. You you did get it. You got a keeper here. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. This is beautiful. I'm yeah, envious. Thanks. I mean, yeah, so I, this is like fantasy football. After you've gotten your kind of big pieces, the rest of the auction, I was looking for kind of neat, high upside, low value, high value picks. So. So th this one I chose. I, I I've I've become a big fan of Art, Art Adams. Um, this is one of his pinups. It's not it's not um, published, but I thought it was you know a death pick a pinup um, with the popularity of Sandman. And if you can zoom in, the, the, what just killed me is you, this. We, we all we all love kind of seeing things about to die and and kind of make fun of it in the movies. You know, like the Wiley e. Coyote, the the T Rex saying, "Uh oh." Just as death is about to annihilate the dinosaurs, I thought was just hilarious. I mean, great touch by Arthur Adams to kind of give it some levity, you know, because death is always kind of can be so serious. But look, there's a beautiful image of death has every I mean, I, I'll, I'll say that, that whoever scored this was was just, uh, I, I think, just getting a, a superb piece. They paid a lot for it. So these unpublished commissions, you know, I, I think around four to eight, depending on the character and. You know, this one, I, I was, I, I saw it jump to 
10. I, but I thought, you know, I, that makes sense. I mean, this is strong, the strong image you're getting of, with the Sandman popularity, with death. I think the just it's a it's a it's a very, very good, good piece by Art Adams. And I just um, I just wanted to highlight it today because I thought it was just it's one worth uh, showing. And certainly with the it's it's at the it's deserving of a of a top of the market price for an Adams pinup. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was Arnold, it, it, Chuck Arnold saying that it was in the gallery, and I think he's right. So mm, no, even better than yeah. So considering it was published, this actually is wow. a really great deal. So this is one I if I if I thought to myself if I can get this for five I'd be very happy but I, I quickly lost lost ground on on very exciting bidders so you did but okay good. with the X Men alone so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right so this is the this is the Bogdan Donave he, he actually consigned basically a lot of these pieces so good for the artist getting his due right getting some some uh, return on 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 the art that he's kept but this one uh, surprised me i think now we know x factor 61 uh, the cover went for 60 grand this is a mm -hmm. a interesting uh, page an interaction with phoenix and wolverine who are just ultra popular i think it's the first time they've had an intimate moment i think that's what the description said I, you know, I thought this was, you know, 20, 22, 25 tops. This went to 33, six. And uh, I think this is already on the back of the cover going for 60 and another page going for 28. I, you knew it was going to go really well. And maybe a, someone's trying to put together that book, the 61 book. But this just, I mean, this for, for the, for Bogdan Nove, he, he's, he's, he he put the right issue up because this was this was in high demand all evening. Like all the pages that came, I think it was two two pages from this set. One was when uh, Phoenix goes into Wolverine's prison and sees him. That went for twenty eight. This one was the intimate moment that went for thirty three. I love the page. I, I think what hurts me a bit is I, I I was trying to read it, but why is Wolverine's face all covered in slime? I couldn't understand why that was the case in that panel, but. Uh, that's the only Go thing that it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he lost his mutant powers apparently, or healing factor, and he was basically dying. And this is Phoenix going in there saying, "You know, you're going to die if you die. I, I just want to let you know I love you, or something like that, something like that." Wow. But good good for the artist, great for the artist. And wow, without question, yeah. No, he, well, John's done very well. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. year. I, I, mean, I thought he did... the way I thought the way Heritage mixed up his art this time by spreading it out over different Brilliant. portions of the auctions was was definitely a better strategy and there was a more there was a greater mix of characters um last time they put all the death of supermans together but this time they mixed the characters i mean it was mostly marvel but you had the x men you had fantastic four you had a good mix you had power pack and oh, yeah. you just spread it out and mm -hmm. it worked a lot better, I think. Absolutely. And, and going back to what we said before, no, knowing this right here, uh, that makes the classic X-Men 17 even more of a bargain, I thought. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd do a coin flip between the two. All right, so this one I wanted to highlight. Th this one came right in the middle of all these 80s and 90s art. Um, and uh, it's a it's Thor, it's it's John Buscema, uh, uh, Thor 20, 221, uh, 30, uh, page 31 it's 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 a classic hercules versus thor battle scene uh, it's got thor knocking hercules on his backside and he, he you see zeus with his staff you know a, a great representation 70s thor with with hercules being uh, introduced to the mcu with uh, love and thunder and he's gonna have a much greater role he was in the end credits but he's gonna have a much greater, greater role i just thought Wow, I and mean, it's going to be a. They're going to have a battle like this soon. Um, you know, this one I would have pegged at around nine thousand value. I mean, again, good classic image. Uh, uh, it, it went for seventy eight hundred, and, um, and I did I did manage to get this one. So congratulations! Um, yeah, no, I thought it was a interesting, good, good, good buy. And I, I this is my period, right? Mid seventies, Thor, Hercules. I I I, I mentioned in my. Uh, interview with Bill that I grew up my before I even got into comics I was reading Greek mythology which was the whole um, you know the Greeks the, the Hercules and Zeus and stuff so 
uh, I've always I've always had a, a an affinity for the, the the Greek gods, and for them to clash with the Norse ones, I think would make a great great movie movie thing. Anyway, so good page, a lot of a lot of nice sound effects, and um, yeah, no, happy to go. Really, really now look, Busema, Busema, Thor, Hercules. You got a you great, go you got a great page. And was this in the four? Was that in the, uh, or or was this? Kind this of was a, in the four. This was, was in the four. four. So you haven't straightened okay. it so far. And no, I'll, I'll, the, the 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 next one was my was my one I really wanted and I didn't get it. All right. I, so let me just tell you what. So there, there's a go. I'm a big uh, Michael Golden fan, and among the hobby, there are two issues that represent in my mind, Golden at his peak. It's Doctor, Doctor Strange 55 yep. and Avengers Annual 10, which is by, by chance the first rogue, right? So this has a lot of extra value. I love the central second panel image of the team. And you have the Quinjet shot, which has every single member of the X-Men. I mean, just, I mean, of the Avengers, just perfectly laid out. And then what's cool is bottom left, you actually see the Quinjet and you can count five jets. Quinn jet, five jets mm -hmm. soaring over Manhattan. Again, I, I, this was, this is one that I really, really wanted to have at first coming into the auction. I thought this was my, oh, one of my the, must haves, the end, but I had already, wow. no, but I had already got the Cockrum and I got, I just came off getting the, uh, getting the Hercules Thor page. And I just, I couldn't go another increment. So oh, I wow. let this one go. Um, the last page that sold from the issue uh, was 8,500, but a year ago. I know that Albert Moy has a page, Dinesh has a page, I wanted a page. This was gonna be it. I, I kind of couldn't chase it. I just mm -hmm. I just didn't. I had to be frugal. I mean, I had to I had to make my mind up on what, what I could go to. I said I'd go to 14, which is about 50 50 percent over the last sale of of a page from this issue. But this is an end page. I should have definitely gone for this one. I mean, it has everything. Well, the, the hard thing, Dina, I mean, look, this did go for a good price. Yeah, very, hard, very strong. Is, is it's it's hard to sit there and go, oh, my God. I, you know, a lot of people do sit there and say, I could have gotten for the 15. And it's like, no, you probably would have driven this up to over 20. Yeah, exactly. Somebody would have bid more. I'm pretty yeah. sure some of them. Yeah. And, and even if they didn't bid more, it would have pushed you up enough to where you're sitting there like, Oh my God! What did I just pay for? Yeah, so that's the big unknown. You're right, Nick. I I don't I don't beat myself up. I'm happy with what I got. But this this one I said as an example uh, of a page, and I think Jeff Wedding says Star Wars 38, another great golden uh, example. There's a there's a Nam. His golden his pages in Nam are very well regarded as well. But th this one's special because of the first Rogue. Rogue isn't in here, but they're talking about what's happened with her, and and I think there's a great. Uh, Vision Wanda panel in the bottom. It's, it's, which is just it's classic. beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, but, like the best part of the page. Oh, absolutely. It's so right Golden there. is getting an artist at his peak. You know, he did a bunch of issues around this time that is is very well regarded. Like very well regarded. Good good luck trying to find a Doctor Strange fifty five page. I'll just say that's that. That's true. Yeah. So. Well. Well, I, I think uh, what what uh, Nick said was true, though. You know, if you would have played it, been a player at it, it just would have kept going up because it's such a such a great page that you, somebody else really wanted it too. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'll 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 move fast on these. So this is the Larry Hammer you mentioned earlier. So he in 2022 they did a 40th anniversary issue of the famous GI Joe 2021 20, cover. Um, they had 22 artists, including Rob Liefeld, do a page, and then they gave Hama, who did the interior, who did the uh, uh, interiors, but not the cover of the original. Uh, they let him do the cover in his interpretation. So he did this. It's like 14 by 20, really huge, um, hard to value. It's a modern piece. It's a, got a lot of nostalgic trend. It went for uh, 45, no, uh, 5200, 5200. And um, I, I got this one. I I, oh, I, had, awesome. I don't. I thought I, I'd like to display it with the vintage stats of the GI Joe Twenty One with the banner that says 40th anniversary is the published cover. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought there's a lot of really good nostalgia behind the Snake Eyes and GI Joe, and um, I don't know. I I just thought it was interesting. It was it's probably not in my sweet spot, but I just couldn't resist when I. Oh come on! One, you have the GI Joe Twenty One cover. I do not. I do not. That's right. But I I just I just thought this is this was an interesting. Again, I I am in the hobby to get stretched, and this is one that I 
I would normally not have been interested, but it just had a lot of things that I could enjoy. It's it's huge, a lot of wall presence, and it kind of gets me that G.I. Joe. I, I didn't read the whole series, but I did, you know, get to know G.I. Joe 21 that and that story pretty well. So Yeah, my only uh, problem with G.I. Joe 21 was it was a quick read. I mean, it was just... <laughs> no words. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but seriously, outside of Ed Hannigan having recreated it, You've got Larry Hama, who is a living legend and the writer of the issue. So yeah. you really can't go wrong with this. It's not like you got one of the 21 other covers. You got the cover by the guy who decided we're going to have a silent issue. Right. Yeah. So it was an interesting piece. Interesting piece. Yeah. And beautiful. So next one is th this one, I think, was was a very interesting one. I had this track because this is Paul Neary, Captain America 324 Splash. What I thought about when I saw this was, you remember the Jack Kirby Tales of Suspense 60 splash, the Kirby thing that went for yeah. 630,000? It's, right. yeah. it's him jumping through a window, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, wow, this is kind of in that vein. It's a very lovely image. It's It's got a lot of impact, a lot of shards of glass, you know, full figure Captain America, just in, a, in speed speed trap or whatever i thought it was really really a cool cool splash it went for 4500 which which is awesome i mean i anytime you go under 5000 for a splash that looks like this i i, I think you're, you're you've been well bought so um, I, I think this is one of the ones that fell between the cracks me too me too yeah but we can't go after everything <laughs> no but 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 i interesting with the so this one alex nino he he created i think that, Artistic wise, this is what I thought was in the top five of this auction. If you look at the detail of Nino's, it's got that Wrightson uh, kind of what do you call it? Woodcut cross hatching thing. He creates monsters just through the different cross hatching. You can see the the hell shaping up behind Conan. So he created this Satan Tears book of all these design, uh, all these paintings and illustrations. This one's kind of a double flash. It's 21 by 14, 20 by, by 13. But just, I thought this was fantastic. From a technical standpoint, this was just so impressive. I don't know how to value it. it was, I think the other Satan Tears illustrations went for three to 4,000. So this was double that. It went for mm -hmm. seven, 7,800. But again, I just, awe yeah. and just looking at this. It's just, yeah. I mean, look at, look at all the characters in the smoke. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. So very impressed with. So you got Nino's this work? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I, I, I had to. I just. I was just so impressed with this. It was on my watch list since the auction began, but uh, I did, just didn't have the coin to chase it at that time. So, well, it was. It's gorgeous. So th this, I, this, I, this is um, uh, Department of Truth uh, DPS. This is actually the first Martin Simmons Department of Truth piece that's heritage is ever auctioned so there wasn't any background there oh, okay. um, i couldn't find any on calf resources all i know is mikhail has like a whole issue of eight and a couple of other people have, have bought it from the artist um it's got good acclaim i think it was done by the, the kid, someone's killing the children writer and the artist he's he's done done some things um this i didn't know how to value but i thought you know what a great wall image the flag the bullets the money this was about um, this this series is about consp uh, uncovering conspiracies and this was about the false flag you know doing things of violence behind being a patriot even though you're you're hurting the country um this was just thought i just thought this was i, I learned to kind of appreciate new artists and um i i did like to see what it would be at, at, at 1500 i i i i, I won it you know, I thought Congratulations. good to get a modern artist that I could just, it's very, I think, wall worthy. It's easy to explain. And it just has mm -hmm. a wonderful image. I, I'm a big flag person. So I think you're going to need to build a new wing for the wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I hope Mikhail kind of tells me that I did well, but uh, he, I think he, he has a lot well. of respect for this artist. And I think oh, yeah. he's a, he's tremendous. And I was, I was, I was interested by it only through, the other, uh, the other cap collectors who who had admired his art. So, thank you, everyone. For, for <laughs> Alberto that. said, "Is there anything you didn't get? The Nino is the only thing that uh, that he did not get." The last one again. I had no idea. I love this image. It was a image of of Spidey's uh, 
uh, villains, right? You have mm -hmm. 20 villains here. The DPS, James, James S. would love it. Um, it's got it's a 30th anniversary uh, issue. I think it was just a great. I, I've never heard of the artist Frank Travelin, Jimmy Palmiotti, Palmiotti, of course, is the inker. Um, you know, I thought this would be, you know, about 5,000, 5,000, 6,000, to five to six, just because of the image alone. And I mean, I, I was not surprised that it went higher than that. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a great image. Um, I didn't bid, but I, I just wanted to point that out as something that, you know, n an artist I didn't know, but an image that I could grow to really, really like. So I know the consigner was very happy with it. Mm. He thought it was going to do about 2,000. 2,000. Yeah. Yeah. I think with the image alone, that in this market would deserve three to four. Just, oh, that's a if, 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 of, if, of if you drew that, if you and I drew this, Nick, it would get twenty five hundred. Uh, if I drew it, it would get twenty five dollars. Somebody, somebody would charge me twenty five dollars to take it off my hands. Oh, yeah. it is thirty years old. I mean, it's you know, it's it's early nineties, and you're right. I, I've never heard of Frank Travelin either, but uh, but it was published in Marvel Tales. I mean, and it's a, right. it's a pinup. It's you know I, it's, it's awesome. somebody remembered well, that thing. that was my that's the last piece. But I just wanted to say you know it was a, I thought it was a strong auction. I think after all the smoke has settled, if you look at the closing prices of a lot of pieces, I think they're still at very you know good values. So yeah. I don't see this all stopping or there's some kind of what's happening crashing whatever. I I think the market's healthy and supply continues to be you know scarce versus demand and you could look through those past auctions and say okay even in my 15 i could pick two or three that i thought were just well undervalued that i would i would buy tomorrow if i could at that price so yeah and this is spider-man versus the sinister 16. oh yeah that's right you get it all you get it all so, so that was yeah. my story now that you know i did forget to show once our usual slide i wanted i actually put it together so we could look at it as far as the sales from this, uh, this uh, you know, signature auction compared to prior ones. And, you know, it looks like it's a down, uh, you know, auction compared to the first three for the year. But, you know, you know, I was kind of looking at it and doing the math. The, uh, the you know, the January auction had the Zek in it. And that one yeah. lot skewed the, the prices Huge. by $6,500 per lot. So, you take, you know, so even though it was, uh, what was it, a 22 Two as an average price, you take sixty five hundred dollars off of it, and you're and now you're back down, you know, into a much more in that in that fifteen range. And the same thing with the the June auction with the Miller, you take that out, and it takes almost four thousand dollars off right. the average price. So, the, wow. you know, the, the fact that uh, the April auction was an, was the outlier because they just had so, so much good material, but nothing not like a, a nothing what reached a million. That was the auction that had that cap image. Yeah. But they did have 950 lots, so that's why it ended up being so high. So, so really, it wasn't a down auction. It was just a lot of uh, you, you didn't have that one home run piece, but you had a lot of great pieces and a lot of solid pieces on yeah. Sunday. Huge depth. I mean, if you were in the kind of 10 to 30 range, there was mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of a lot of variety in pieces for you. But I think even under 10, the the five to 10 was just deep i mean there was just so much in that zone that you could really uh, go and i think that pushed a lot of prices up because of the demand as, as the auction unfolded you kind of felt people wow they realized that there's still some strength in this market and they were bidding aggressively no i agree i agree so i was just trying to i think this reinforces the idea that you know at first i thought maybe the auction was a little bit you know of a disappointment maybe but it really wasn't like you were saying a lot of the lots still were going about 10 percent over what you were thinking they were going to be or sometimes even a little more not too many went uh you know were were surprisingly lower than what we were expecting so so yeah it still seems you know fairly uh the, the good stuff is always going to demand a good price and even even if things are a little everybody's a little nervous about the economy and everything the pieces are still commanding solid prices like you mentioned the consigner on the one piece was thinking they were going to get a third of what it is <laughs> so congrats to him for her yeah, yeah. well um, no, I mean, and, and to echo what you guys are saying is that i think a lot of art right now is maybe the best word is plateauing where you're seeing a lot of the medium art maybe going for, and this is scary to say, 5, 10, 15% higher than you would expect as opposed to 40, 60% higher. But yeah. that top 10% of art 
And again, there's always going to be a few pieces that fall between the cracks, but that top 10% of art is continuing to overperform more and more because it is the top 10%. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think this should should give us more confidence in the market, right? Because that means that things we buy or things we've held when we want to go to market, there's some more confidence that it will realize what you think and not like a crapshoot like it used to be 20 years ago. Exactly. And I always look at it like this, which is if I buy a piece and I need to sell it tomorrow because I need money for something, can I at least get 80% of my money back? How, you know, because you have to be realistic. If you win something in an auction just now, trying to sell it, you're going to lose some value more often than not, right? Or you or you run the risk, I should say. Yeah, that's right. But but with with a lot of the art today maintaining and so like to what Bill said, you didn't have the Dark Knight, you didn't have the Secret Wars, you didn't have that. Gotta see it. But this is also why in the last auction, Bill and I agree on this. People were like, oh, the Dark Knight disappointed. It's like, no, it did two million. It did two million. But the expectation of Secret Wars built it up so much. And it's like, oh my God, when we're sitting here and saying an original piece of art, an iconic cover, yes, one of the most iconic covers our industry has ever had. But when we're sitting there saying two million dollars, that is a strong price realized. What this auction had was a lot of great art, which became more affordable for more people. And so, you know, I right mean, on. I got a few Alex Ross pieces that were $1,300 each, which, you know, it was over Doug Braithwaite. Um, and they weren't battle pages or anything like that. But I was like, oh, my God, I, I never thought I would get some really cool Alex Ross pages. And, you know, the the page that I really went after was one with the scarecrow outside of its costume because it just looked cool. And the one where you got Giganta trying to kill the Adam. And it's like, OK, so the largest character is trying to kill the smallest character. And I was just like, this is just a cool page. Exactly. You know? I'll but use the word medium from now. Has, <laughs> has, is now maintaining as opposed to shooting up more than the, than you would expect. Yes, and I, and I, I saw everybody didn't like my my uh, the word average, so I won't use that ever again. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yes, but Chuck also made a really good point in the chat where he said, "I don't know how if it's as much the economy as it's an abundance of product, and it's still a strong uh, market, which is good." And that's true too. I mean, with I mean, all, you look at Comic Connect's got an auction going off on uh monday i mean yeah. you know we have our weekly sales shows i mean heritage has their weekly on wednesday right before that we just had a comic link feature featured auction and uh you know prior to that so so all of that and it, it, to chuck's point the abundance of uh art on the market and things are still relatively strong i mean we had a great you know dueling dealers last night where we went over 50 wow, as yeah. odd as that you know ended up being but the thing so the thing is it, people are still they, they, they're buying now because this is the opportunity. Who knows? People might pull back in a few years and then we won't have this uh, this boon that we have of great art on the market. So uh, you got to strike while you can. Well, that's the other thing. These great prices are bringing out more art. You know, I mean, if the prices weren't so strong, I'm not sure that Dark Knight cover would have come out. Rumor has it that a year and a half ago, the owner was offered a million dollars and he turned it down. He didn't feel it was enough at the time. And you can't sit here and disagree with him. The fact that he got two million. First of all, it went for two point four million. So yeah, let's, that's right. Let's, mm-hmm. let's always remember that because there are some people that don't count the juice, and it's like the money left your pocket. The juice counts. If the juice doesn't count, listen. On the Friday night experience, I'll charge you an extra twenty percent. I'll give it to charity, but because <laughs> it doesn't count. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I mean, and, and to your point, Bill. You guys had dueling dealers on Saturday. You moved it to Saturday. There was comic link that ended as Heritage began. And, you know, as you're showing the weekly results on eBay with the retailers, with the dealers, the money is still moving no matter what. This is still a strong market. It's still a vibrant market. So everybody who's saying the sky is falling, it's not. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I don't think, you know, I, I think people are waiting to see the sky fall. They're not necessarily saying it's falling. They're, they're expecting it to And happen. Marcus just corrected me that I heard the story wrong real quick. So yeah. we need to highlight that. Oh, oh, where you said that he was offered one mil. He paid one mil for it. He paid one million. So yeah, thank uh, you, Marcus. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't. I wasn't paying attention to the chat. Sorry about that. Yes, through Mitch. Well, then there you go. They doubled the doubled their uh, investment. Yeah, uh, take that every day, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Of course. So okay. um, Nick's right, well, list. Yeah, let's take a look at Nick's. I've got. Uh, let's see the share screen. Right I don't know. Here. I thought we were going to go in order of who handed in their art. You went second, Bill. You should well, go next. You know, I, well, I'll tell you, what, we're, we're going so late. I, I think we might even just skip mine. I, I, you know, I could say my a few things about my list, but you know, I, and not. I'm not trying to rush anybody. I just feel like I think we're. I think having both Dino's and Nick's lists are kind of perfect because I'm, I'm thinking maybe maybe this is a compliment to the. So what we do with the our standard heritage recap is having kind of a blow by, by blow kind of approach through an auction with somebody who's who's actively bidding in it, like you were Dino and like you were, you were Nick. I think this is this is you know this is actually interesting and insightful because you're giving your collector perspective on pieces you were considering and were interested in, we're actually trying to get, and that's not something that we usually hardly at all talk about. We will say somebody got a piece, but we don't really have that story about what led up to getting that piece and reconsidering. And like you said, Dino, the first piece you looked at with uh, the Wolverine, uh, you know, piece, the fact that, you know, you were, you, you would have been a player in it if you weren't so worried about things at the tail, the tra you know, the tailing yeah. end of the auction. And so, no, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. So I don't think we need to hear my, because I, I just had minimal observations. So, uh, so let's had all, you, all Thor pages anyway. So. That's right. They were, all, <laughs> they were almost all Thor or X-Men. Or X-Men. I was about yeah. to say, if you, uh, probably the other Dave Cockrum X-Men. Right. Yeah. And my biggest points were, were I, I could just say, because I made them during the Sean Gordon Murphy interview, was that you know, there were several modern pieces that were sold recently that were done in the last year and a half that all sold for more than what they were originally bought for. There was an Adam Hughes uh, Black Widow cover that I know sold mm -hmm. on Comic Art Live for, I think, six that went for 10 at this. And then I don't know what that Jay Lee uh, uh, cover. Now, I'm, I'm, name's escaping me. And I know both of you guys know it. Sentry. Uh, killing the children. The children. Oh, right. killing the children. Yeah. That, that sold for 22. I mean, th there's no way wow. that's what it sold for. So the, the idea that is that, you know, typically I always think that the modern pieces that are being sold are not going to realize their 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 original sold price that early. I always tell everybody, be the second you know, owner of the art. It's going to be cheaper than the guy who paid for it first. But th there were many examples of uh, mo more modern pieces in this auction that did sell for considerably more than the price, you know, less than a, a year ago or less. Which again is a great sign of the hobby. It's good. It's pretty good. Correct. At that modern end. And look, as long as we remember one thing, if we're buying for the emotional value more than the financial value, we'll always come out ahead because mm -hmm. that's the biggest reason to buy anything. It's got to mean something to you emotionally because if it, you know, and that, that goes back to the other thing. If I, if I buy something or win something, can I get 80% of it back? If I have to, I, it's the emotional part for me that pushes me. Value does, does end up pushing you. Don't get me wrong. It's a factor. You, you can't buy anything at these prices without, first of all, again, the emotional has to be there at these prices at any price at this point. Um, but the value, the perceived value, and what you might need to do, that's always a factor. But yeah, the Jay Lee, Something is Killing the Children, probably sold for $7,500. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's Marvel and DC covers can sell for 10000 So mm -hmm. yeah, you, you would say, oh, Something is Killing the Children. But again, the heat of that book, James Tinian, uh, has has been so great it just had and it's the first one that made it to auction i think so that built up but and again like adam hughes is doing less work right now he's working outside the industry so anything you can get is going to go for more money and you're right bill those days those days for the most part seem to be over that if you buy from the dealer and the artist that you're paying more, but then the secondary buyer might get a better deal. And mm -hmm. that goes back to my whole 80% thought process. But now that's changed. But let's talk about what's in front of us. Um, Michael Turner, this went 
probably I thought the lowest this would go for was four thousand, and I felt that it may go to six thousand or so. Michael Turner art is is starting to hit that zeitgeist. First of all, he was always one of the most popular artists, and his art has gone for a lot of money. But right now, you know, Michael Turner, one of the most talented, nicest people I've ever met, died way too soon. Um, his art is limited. And whoever got this today, I mean, this is the equivalent on some levels to buy Jim Lee pages a few years ago for ten or 15000 or even 5000 and then it tripling within a few years. Turner Art, I truly feel, will grow exponentially. This was a good price realized. It was right in line of where it should be, but that's also because of where Turner Art is. I mean, this isn't Marvel. This isn't DC. It is where he made his mark, where he first started, and it's gorgeous. So my hat's off to the winner. I thought this might go to the 6000 or more range, so I didn't go for it, but it's 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 beautiful you know it's a beautiful piece and and the majority of the turner stuff that's come to market recently at least has been all pencils so if you want an inked piece yes uh it's it's it has obviously better in hand mm -hmm. that's presence. true it does it frames it frames arguably better um and it's just it's just fantastic and you're right the pencil pieces are great and they will always do well but having something inked is definitely special hi michael callahan you're back <laughs> you had a little break there all right so this was that wow. uh, yeah the casada palmiati ninjak uh, cover i mean to me this just reinforces the magic that Joe Quesada and Jimmy Palmiotti had left such an impression on everyone. And I don't think this is much of a secret. Jimmy can sign this himself. Mm. And he got offers that were under 50000 We'll leave it at that. Like people were trying to get it at a cheaper price. Oh, so, he, so he was the consigner of it. All right. Yeah, well, he, he and I had talked about it, oh, you know, like eight months ago where he was thinking about it. He said that wow. people were interested in it. And I thought I figured he must have sold it, and then it, you know, the buyer uh, put it out there. So he consigned it himself. Oh, that's he good. consigned it. He consigned it himself. He wasn't happy with the offers. And um, look, this is a wraparound cover, and to a lot of people from the early '90s, this is a signature character. And a, again, you know, Joe Quesada and Jimmy Palmiotti were such leaders and such a great team. You know, they were, you could almost say that they were the Kirby Senate of their time. And they left such an impression, not only with fans, but with other creators who grew up loving them. And their body of work really only runs from about 1992 to 1998-99 to, to the Marvel Knights. So there's only six or seven years of work that you can get. So, and I told Jimmy, you know, he was putting this in and he, he felt that he wanted to take the risk. And I told him, I said, look, I said, it's going to be less of a risk than you think probably because everybody who offered you less than the 50 will be bidding going to go after it till a certain point. And I said, I will tell you right now, I'll go up to 30 myself and because I would love to own it, but I, if it shoots pack past 30, I said, it's going to go to 50 plus juice, in my opinion. And it went for 55 plus juice. And it is a stunning cover. It is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. The person who won this has got something that is irreplaceable. It is so incredible. And, and even their Valiant work, I think, only lasted a year. They did a bunch of cover. I mean, well, you got to think about this. Joe started as a colorist at Valiant and then became a superstar artist. I think they drew three issues of interior pages together. Um, and, you know, their body of work was Valiant. Joe did Swords of Azrael the, and, and X Factor. XO. XO. Right, 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 right. XO, but but um, at DC and Marvel, I was throwing that uh -oh. out. Plus, yes, plus XO plus Ninjak, mm -hmm. and um, 
then they did the event comics, but the art that's held the highest regard, you know, Ash is really cool from event. Um, some of the other characters, Kid Death and Fluffy were all cool, but it's Valiant and Daredevil that people want. And there is so little Valiant and Daredevil by Joey and Jimmy. This did not surprise me at all. Um, uh, Chris, that's, and, and you know what? I will say that Nolan Casada is different and everybody, we all have, and I love it as well. I own some sort of Azrael pages that I love to death and I've got some daredevil pages that I love to death. And I would have loved to have added this to my collection, but it wasn't to be. And, you know, the funny thing, and, and yeah, Mark Kirby said it is a high bar, but to a younger generation, that is the bar that it is to them. We have to remember that there are late 30-year-olds and early 40-year-olds at this point that this is what they grew up on. This is what they loved. And they have the disposable income right now. And this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for a lot of people. And it realized the price that it should. And when it went... It went a little bit higher than I thought it would. I thought it would hit that 50-plus juice. But, again, it just shows you how great it is. Look, I own uh, – I own – I own – all right. I do own some Ninja interior pages. I should say that. But to get a cover would have been a dream. But it just wasn't to be. It just wasn't. And this one, this one, as you said, is a signature piece. I, You know Jimmy earned his money on the inking. Can you imagine when – Joe passed along the pencils, and Jimmy sees this with all the glass shards. He says, what the? <laughs> That's a lot of work for the inker to kind of complete that. But what a gorgeous uh, and signature piece. From that it is. No, it is. And I, I mean, when I, he told me about it, I said, well, if you can get 50, you should sell it. If you can get that, get or you think you can get it. So I'm glad he got it. <laughs> Look at Marcus. The 20% knocks it back down. Oh, uh -huh. It does. It does. Nick has people. some comment reading while talking skills. <laughs> So, okay, so I just want to make sure I, that I was the only person out of us to pick this. This was, and again, this just goes to show you anything can happen. This was one of the steals of the auction. It really, really was. I mean, I, it's, it's not the Tales of the Teen Titans action page, and Brother Blood is in silhouette, but... I would have thought this page would have broken 40,000 or more. Um, and the one collector whose computer froze right in the middle of the auction, um, it, it's, it's honestly, a, I, I have a feeling I know how high they would have went, um, but this is still a beautiful cover. Um, and Dino's right. It's, it's a three quarter cover. You've got the side, uh, stat there um you know kind of, almost like the old world's finest where dc had <laughs> these like two little things on the side saying also in this issue but um but no this this should have went for 40 and it was a or more and it was a glitch that allowed someone to to uh to get this at a really affordable price and if i had any feel it would have went for this i missed out on it a few years ago when it was on heritage and then it went for 18 grand but now i mean considering where the market's at somebody got lucky but still a good price yeah, yeah definitely someone's aol crash <laughs> There are a few out there still <laughs> using AOL. You know, Mr. Berkey and uh, Albert both have their AOL accounts. Right. Uh, wrong AOL accounts they've had forever. I've tried to break Mike of it. He, he will never uh, break away from his AOL. He, he doesn't know he can keep AOL and it can then go to his new email address, right? Gmail. I've, I've tried. It do, He just doesn't get it. Well, congrats to the person who was for Yes, you. that was. I agree. That was a good buy. Uh, and... Uh, I'm sure whoever got it's pretty happy about it. Yeah. Now this, much like Adam Hughes, much like what you were saying earlier, Bill, um, J. Scott Campbell classic art is going for an incredible amount of money right now. But this is an image character, Spawn. It's not one of his Marvel or DC characters. But the execution by J. Scott 
is so beautiful, so detailed, so perfect that this definitely went for a premium. And I, if I were to bet, I would have thought maybe this would have broken 20,000 plus juice. And that was me thinking there would be a couple of people just going neck and neck, but like that, that might be the highest anybody could go. But this just shows the strength of the market and the love and strength that J. Scott Campbell has because um, that's a fantastic price. That's a great price. image. It is. And that's a great price for a pay, a cover that's what? Two years old? Seven, 18, I think. Is that right? No, uh, isn't it one 300? Yeah, it was in, uh, what's this, 2019? 219, okay. Yep. Okay. Well, it also gets a premium because it's one of those rare uh, Scott Campbell uh, uh, covers not signed by Stan Lee. So you get a little premium. <laughs> that, added, that added another. That probably uh, did add something. That's some where point. the other $10,000 came in. Not signed by Stan in the middle part. Right, and you know, and I, I, J. Scott Campbell commands a pretty, you know, decent price yeah. on his on his first sales out there. And and sometimes I've seen where they where they, they don't, you know, if, if somebody tries to flip one right away, they don't. They're because the, he's kind of the reference in my mind of somebody who's who had whose work he gets the price that he he desires and and should get. But you know, and I've seen some of the pieces that when somebody needs to flip one, they don't necessarily get it. But here's an example where somebody probably tripled. What or almost tripled what they uh, would have probably you know spent on this. So I mean that's that's a good sign. If somebody really uh, you know likes uh, like Spawn or they like the three hundredth episode you know, issue type of thing. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, a solid. Well, three hundred and three hundred was a special issue. That yeah. was the issue where Todd told everybody you can't just do a variant cover. Uh, Jay Scott actually drew an interior sequence. Greg Capullo drew an interior sequence. Scott Snyder wrote Greg Capullo's sequence. So you had a book where, and that probably added to this because this was one of Todd's best-selling books. Again, this put Spawn back on the map. Todd was a genius with Spawn 300. He got the Guinness Book of World Records for 301. He got some great talent to be a part of it. And probably more people saw the J. Scott Campbell because of it and because of the interior pages. And this is a really great <coughs> price. I would imagine the consigner is very happy. And I can I can guess that the person who can uh, who bought it is not going to be selling it anytime soon, considering what was realized. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing. It's not a female character. It's not mm. a female character, which is where Rare. Campbell's sales are for the most part. Sure. So, you know, it just worked out. This one was Nikki can cry page. So <laughs> even you know, Barucci can cry. This, this made yeah. Nick Barucci cry because Nick Barucci prayed that this was going to be in the 12 to 15 range um after juice and it's a superman it's it's not the superman flash race but it's it's flash racing with superman um but when you look at the combination of jim lee on the justice league i mean this is a splash page and this is modern and look how well it did and you know to be able to get jim lee flash superman race would have been a dream come true but the price realized was just incredible. And yes, Chris, I agree. Flash is faster. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, it, 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 it's, it's just incredible. But again, this is where the Jim Lee market is going. Modern, classic. You grew up with him in the 90s. Um, you know, you've grown up with him the last 10 years. The art is just going up. I mean, I, I'm just glad about five or six issue, years ago, I bought a bunch of pages from Albert when they were in the $1,200 to $1,500 range. They're panel pages, but 
you know, today they would be a lot more because the affordable art is shooting up percentage wise even more. But yeah, this made me cry. Especially like, for Ayla. I mean, this is a great image of the, the feathering on the shading. It's not like the bold strokes that you see in Batman, very dark. This is this is so well, well crafted. And, and now, you know, these days in auctions, you can't get. I mean, when you look at the, what is the MLB, right, the Miller Lee Bolland. Yeah. There's a floor if you want to get anything nice. And even though this is a splash, it went for cover money. Yeah. And, and look, some people, uh, Flash can outrun real life cops. There are some people in the chat. By the way, everybody hit that thumbs up. Um, yeah. There are some Thank people in the chat saying um, that this went for more than the comic link page with more characters. And it did. But I do think it's it, this bridges a few generations where you've got the Jim Lee love and you've got the Superman Flash. Race That's right. Love. Nostalgic wise, Superman Flash has always been. I mean, you look at the Overstreet; those issues always went for premium. Mm -hmm. And even yeah. though you don't have multiple characters, you have huge images of these two who are just dynamically paired. So, uh, yeah, it's I, it's I, a, I would it's take a, the. It's a perfect modern Jim Lee piece. I am biased, but it is. Oh, you can. Sorry for your loss, Nick. Right, exactly. Yes. It would look great in your collection. <laughs> it would have. All so right. this Arlen. was the what the you know <sighs> what happened here. I mean, I you know this and John Romita Jr. Daredevil prices. I mean, I looked at this page and. I was just this and the other. I, I'm like looking at it like I get it's McFarlane. I get it's the only Daredevil issue he did. But Jesus, how many of us friggin diehard Daredevil fans can there be? I mean, this went for Frank Miller price. I, I think these are Mc, McFarlane collectors who want an example of all his key heroes. Spidey, Hulk, you know, Infinity and then Daredevil. And there's only a few Daredevils to be had. So. Yeah, I know. And and you know what? I've hardly the, the, the pages I've seen came out in this auction. I don't think I've ever seen any other McFarlane Daredevil out there. And this is just a cool page. I mean, look, you got the little kid. I mean, I got to tell you that little kid with the with the DD is just adorable. It's so cool. It is. And it's it's just oh my god, I could not believe what this went for. I really cannot believe how much this went for. I thought this was going to top out at 8 to 12. I really thought that's where it was going to top out. But it went into the live strong. I mean, yeah, and as David said, it broke the top 30. So my mind is blown. So this is the other one that made me cry. Surprise. Yeah. Well, and this is the challenge in the market today because, you know, you'd have a dealer. I mean, if Albert had this or Mike had this, I mean, would they really put it more than 15? Probably not. And that's why, you know, even for dealers who are trying, who, 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 you, who should know the market better, you can't predict something like this. You just, you know, you, you really can't. So it's a, uh, it's, it's things like this that are, you know, the, it's, I don't know, you, you don't want to call them outliers anymore because it's becoming the norm where you, you really can't estimate where certain pages yeah. are going to go and what's going to drive certain buyers to really want a piece. I think, Dino, your, your remark about somebody wanting a McFarlane example of all their major, you know, the characters that they worked on, it has to be something along those lines. It's I mean, remember, you only need two bidders who really want to yeah. go to town on it. So, uh, I, look, the consigner was happy with the outcome, and so was so was the buyer <laughs> because they went this high. But exactly. Rick Well actually brought up a good point as to why it went for so much money. That's not Daredevil on the uh, paper bag. That's Dueling Dealers. So you got that crossover <laughs> audience. Mm, there you I go. get it now. I get it, Rick. I'm gonna I'm gonna make nice. a mask like that for uh, for Halloween. Nice, for Rick. <laughs> Thank you. And and Daniel's like, come on, Nick, at least fourteen. Okay, okay. So, but it's but it is it is a stunning page, and I guess one of the thing is if you, if you just show the whole page again, Bill, real quick, if you can, sure. you're not seeing as much of McFarland's cartooniness in here. Mm, it's serious, it, yeah. It's it's more serious, and that may have been the factor. I don't know that it was, but 
uh, it's gorgeous. So yeah, Bill, I think as Marcus said, you know, this is the new hat that you got to give away paper bags with the DD on it. <laughs> Uh, All right, I'll work on that. I'll put, I'll put my kids to, to work on that. There How's you that? go. Yeah. Next, I'm talking too much about this. Uh, this was yeah. this was another holy heck. What the you know, uh, Gil Kane. Uh, it's a great cover. It's iconic. But man, I thought this again. Another one that I thought would top out between eight and twelve. I so mean, this is one that I, I'll credit Dan Podick was he and I were chatting before this came up and he goes, you know, watch that Kane Green Lantern. It's going to surprise you. And he meant mid 20s. And I'm like, I was thinking, no, no, I, I, I don't see it there. But he, he was right. I mean, the, the Silver Age stuff has gone up so much uh, that, you know, to get him on his signature character in D.C. is Green Lantern. Um, you like the, I mean, the image, you got the power ring, you've got almost like, it's just, he, it didn't surprise him. And now and he was right. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's got that it's, oath look, right? It's, it's the oath. It's um, the oath. Hmm. It's the oath. You, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, you, you beat me by seconds by saying that. I mean, again, this is like the Neil Adams oath page from last auction that went for 40,000 where my mind was blown. So, you know, I, I thought this was a great cover. But I, you know, and it's marker, I think. So I'm thinking 8 to 12K. Yeah, you know, maybe a little bit higher, but. Then boom. I know. It just exploded. So. Well, yeah. Were you Nick. trying to get this one, Nick? Just out of curiosity. Um, I wasn't list. trying to get it, really. I mean, if it if it was in the eight grand, grand range or something, I probably would have thrown my hat in the ring. Mm -hmm. But it just, and I was just like, wow. Well, oh, this looks cool. Yeah, this is a nice one. Kirby Royer. Uh, this is, the, yeah, the reason why I picked this is Mike had that other page on Dueling Dealers. that. He oh, yeah, on. that's right. So I think the the reason why I brought up this page is because the difference between this page and the other page, Mike had a page with Submariner, Regal, and everything, but it was Jack and Stan and Flo and um, Saul as the Fantastic Four. Right. But this just shows you when you have that key moment with the Watcher going back and talking about the the earth that we know just what that means to anybody i mean both pages are the last fantastic four that jack kirby drew period it's mm. the last fantastic four and actually the last submariner so it's the last time he drew both groups of the ff and submariner but the fact that this has the watcher the fact that this has the classic fantastic four it went for more money and it's just showing the disparity between the two but there's a reason for it and i just thought it went for for a strong price probably a little higher than i thought it would but not so much higher where you know this wasn't the gil kane or the todd mcfarland where my mind was blown but it but it was just coincidental that this page was in the auction and mm -hmm. mike had the other page and i just thought oh let's talk about this for a little bit yeah, right, I think this Mike has a lot of conversation. This has a lot of conversation value too. Like to a, oh yeah, even a non collector, you know. Didn't Mike's page was wasn't it priced at like ten? I can't remember. It was. It was, and somebody it picked sell. it. Yeah, somebody so. picked it up for ninety five hundred later. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, that is true. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but so, again, you know, if Mike put it in, you never know too. It's something like that, he could have put it in the auction and it could have got twelve. You know, it's yeah. It's, I think it's so hit or miss right now, and and yeah. I think uh, uh, you, you might even start seeing dealers start consigning some of their pieces just because they're probably going to do better than selling it. I, I think they already are, Bill. They are. Right. They, are. Right. they have, they, to, pay, they have yeah. to pay for the stuff they're winning. They and, have uh, to. Just yeah. real quick, Daniel, uh -huh. I, I don't think Gil is an unsung hero. He's actually one of my five, top five favorite artists of all time because Green Lantern is one of my two favorite DC characters. It's flashing Green Lantern, but because Gil's body of work is so incredible, everything he did at DC in the 60s, everything he did at Marvel in the 70s. I mean, Gil worked on some of the biggest and best heroes in the Marvel Universe. X-Men Giant Size 1. Right? Yeah, and did some of the most compelling covers Marvel ever had in, in the 70s. So... 
um, you know, again, you know, I I hold him in the highest regard. So I, it just still felt like a strong price. This I wanted to bring up because I thought it was so cool and so different. Okay. Four covers that created one image. Um, there wasn't much of this back in the day. And it's not four covers of the same issue. Uh, that's something only Dynamite would do. Um, it's four <laughs> covers over four issues. And it's the Detroit Justice League. I think it went for the right price. I think about five grand a cover is the right price. And I just thought it was cool. You know, this this didn't go for too much. It didn't go for too little. It went for a really, really solid price. And it it just stood out as a great piece, you know. I and mean, it's also poster size. So whoever posts this on calf, they show a picture of them holding it, which is about <laughs> as it's 30, 22 by 30 or something. Yeah, like it's, oh, it's wow. amazing. Well, so if you see it on calf, we're gonna tell people they have to take they that have to. photo. Yeah. Yeah. And this is my childhood too, Chris. It really is. Um, it's just it's just fantastic. It's you know. Um, Chuck Patton, you know, we were bringing up some of the unsung heroes, Chuck Patton, you know, um, Ron Wilson, Luke McDonald. There are a lot of seventies and eighties mm. artists. Those guys don't get enough attention. And it's right. another reason why I wanted to bring this up because Chuck Patton is one of those unsung heroes that doesn't get enough love and this really stands out in my opinion and that center face is just so, so cool. great i really mm -hmm. like this format bill where we're not sitting here just talking about the big money stuff where we're just we're yeah, talking this is stuff about that anyone can that are enjoy fun. and appreciate mm -hmm. yeah. sure no i get it i'm with you i'm with you all right so j scott campbell alex garner gen 13. yeah for an eighteen thousand, wow, that's that's a strong price. And again, I mean, this also to a degree shows. I mean, I think this is the future of Mark Mike Turner. Going back to that, mm -hmm. um, but this going for this much money, I mean, this goes back to J. Scott Campbell's more well known for drawing female. Um, this is one of his earliest work, mid nineties. You know, because I mean, it's funny. Gen 13 was not supposed to be the breakout hit that it was. You know, Scott was able to get a job at Wildstorm as an intern. You know, we 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 don't remember that back in the 80s and 90s, starting off uh, as an intern, you know, like Howard Chaikin started off working for Gil Kane. Joe Jusko started off working for Howard Chaikin. You know, J. Scott Campbell started off as, as an intern and a contest winner at Wildstorm. And Gen 13, if I remember correctly, wasn't supposed to be the breakout hit that it was. And at the time, it became their most successful series. And just this really left an impression upon people, you know, as the comics market was was constricting and shrinking at the time, all of a sudden you've got a book that launched at over 100,000 that people were loving that was um, out of left field. But Mr. Easy Go Lucky, I, I, I get what you're saying. Oh, my God, Marcus. <laughs> I, I, Gen 13 means so much to so many people um this is this is just it's just indicative of where this market is at i'll tell you I, i'll tell you a quick a quick one um a friend of mine needed money and he had a gen 13 page and he sold it to mike lovitz mike lovitz put it on calf the second within an hour of putting it on calf he got an offer for five times what he paid for it now, Mike, being the great guy that he is, decided to take the – he took the offer, he took the profit, and gave it half to my other friend. He's like, you needed the money. I barely got to put this up, and he gave him half the profit. I mean, that's that's how rare these pages are. And the, the I, I, will, I will say this. I thought it would go for 12. It's a splash mm -hmm. page in more ways than one, besides the fact that they're splashing in the water – but it's it's just you know Scott's classic material 
it's in people's collections and it's not being released. And I think also you have to remember in the hobby, we have this 30 year rule where after 30 years, the people who are nostalgic for certain books, they are in the prime of their earning and disposable income. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so now 30 years ago was the kind of mid nineties starting to come into vogue. And I, I just think that's going to continue to inflate some of those, uh, values for those artists that people really admired them mr easy go lucky this is a good if you've got a page this is a good time <laughs> to sell it <laughs> oh man uh what do we got next oh gene colon daredevil page with with uh dr doom this one's the great issue 37 has been skyrocketing in price all pages um I, I I bought I I do I did not realize how lucky I got. Um, nice. I I did not no 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 not lucky on this no. Oh, I couldn't believe I you it. got this one. I bought a page from Bashara in January with Doctor Doom in like Times Square panel page, but I got it for twenty two hundred and I was like, uh, you know. I mean, it's Colin, but you know what? I don't, you know, Colin, Dr. Doom. And it's, it doesn't have Daredevil. That was my struggle. It doesn't have Daredevil. It doesn't have Matt Murdock. It's got Dr. Doom putting up like a force field against people in Times Square. But like, Will just sold a page for an incredible amount of money. This just sold for an incredible amount of money. For some reason, this issue, maybe with the rumor Dr. Doom's going to be yeah, MCU. a Mariner. Mm-hmm. Or maybe just because this issue was special to so many people, I mean, it just kind of blew my mind too. It just, it just really did. I wasn't going after it because I knew it would go for decent money after I saw what Will sold a page for, but I did not think it was going to go for this much money. I mean, it's uh, Chuck. You got a good deal on that Blackhawk page, by the way. You got a really good deal. Oh, congrats, Chuck. Yeah, I mean, this is a great page. I mean, oh, the it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Jake. That was uh, yeah. that was one hell of a page. I really yeah. Um, but this page, it's Doctor Doom trapped and still being indignant. You know, <laughs> it's it's basically like I don't care if I'm trapped. I'm still, you know, I'm going to get out of this. You're the fool that'll still be trapped. I'm Victor Von Doom, you know? I mean, look, it even ends, you know? It, it's it's just, while you, you are Dr. Doom. I mean, that's Daredevil throwing it out there. I am Daredevil, but still, it is so, it's so, but it blew my mind. I mean, inspired the, even inspired a movie, Freaky Friday, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. But if anybody thought this was going to go for 15,000 plus, congratulations for that. I just, yeah. So next, before I, you know, I'll just repeat myself. Okay. Oh. This page went for a higher premium than I thought it would. It's it's early. It's early Sandman. It's Sam. You know, it's Morpheus talking to John Constantine. Uh, it's it's Keith and Drimberg. It's great, but I was like. This is a thirty to forty thousand dollar page, and I was on the phone with somebody, and he said, "No, it's not." I was like, "Yeah, it is." I was like, "I know." I, I said, "You know, Albert had a page one with a lot of stat that two years ago sold for twenty five, but no, that was no page death. One. I mean, no death. I mean, no. Um, there was no um, Morpheus there on that one. The twenty five that he sold. It was right, the right. library scene. So oh, you add, right. yeah, you add Morpheus, you're talking 30, as you said, 30 to 40, Yeah, you know, for the early issues, um, minimum, depending, and he's on multiple panels here. So yeah. it, it is higher than I thought. I watched this too, but I, um, I, I, I think with the Sandman series being so, so well received Yeah, and it's just, it's with John, you get uh, John, whatever, uh, uh, Constantine. Constantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, and I just I I was like I said I was on with a friend going looking at this and I'm like this is going for more than I thought. He's like it's not going for more than I thought. Right. And 
and, and I just I, I was amazed. I was just amazed. So I, I, I look. I've been looking for a great Sandman page. I would love to have had Sandman with Constantine, but my mind was like, I'm never. You know, I'm. I, I got to find something else. And then this price got realized, and it just blew my mind. And and Chuck uh, Chuck's being congratulated and saying thanks. So he won this page, obviously. Uh, no, I think they're still talking about the black yeah, hawk. The black hawk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It doesn't look like Sam Keith. This was really, you know, the, the thing is, is this is right after adolescent radioactive black belt hamster Sam <laughs> Keith. Right. This, this isn't Marvel Comics Presents Sam Keith. You know, this was, this was in between. So he was still becoming who he became with Marvel Comics Presents. Um, but again, Mike Drindenberg inked it so there is those two distinct styles so mm -hmm. went for went for more than i thought but i was being told i was wrong i i was thinking not enough of it with as dino said the sandman tv series is doing so great so could have had a little bit to do with it but yeah but, uh, it's a great price for it yeah which led to this page so I did win this page. Yay, Nick. Wow. Thanks. Thanks. And I talking to my friend and uh, I, I, I just, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm like, why isn't this to me is a better page. Lucifer Morningstar, David Bowie being used as the model. Um, it's it's the it, it, while this isn't the first page, this is his first issue. It's a gorgeous double page spread, and it just even in the this is the only place that this two page spread exists in the collections. They redrew it to make it two separate pages, which. I would have killed somebody for doing that. It's like do a chapter break or something. That's right. Yeah, do this 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 is phenomenal, yeah. Nick. And then I love the fact that you have all this is his trip to hell. First time he meets Lucifer, and then you have the irregular borders. You got the images in there that are kind of freaky backgrounds. You got the other two devils appearing. It's it's fantastic. I mean, just yeah. what, what it's, it's, and I think it's oversized too. This is an eighteen, if I remember, eighteen inches. Uh, for this issue so yeah a bigger piece of art image and image size i almost didn't put that last bit in and 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 mike said he said hit that button one more time well let me see i think you're right this is this is that prime cut bit this had just hit 50 and i think you got it 52 5 yep which gets the 60 so you you yeah. you forced the strong hand cut and yep. the other the other person flinched. So congratulations. Yeah, I, I I just I was like, I I I I can't I, and, and Michael was just like hit that button. You want this. <laughs> You've been waiting four years for the right Sandman page. You've been telling me for two weeks how much you love this page. And I said, Well, you're right, the other page just went for 75. This is a good deal. I was like I was like, two seconds left, two seconds left, <laughs> you know? You'll and... be glad you pressed that button, Nick. This yeah, is, this I think so. Stand -up. It's, it's, a, it's a beauty. It really yeah. is. Wow. Well, I got really lucky. I got really lucky. See, we don't get these stories on the regular uh, Heritage Recap, do we? No, because we go from top to bottom. This is That's right. this is more this enjoyable. Would, it would have been at the top, but yeah, we wouldn't like have this. talked about it like this. I, I'm enjoying this. This is fun. Yeah. Pushing so, the camel art envelope. Yeah, God, I mean, it is gorgeous. I mean, that's I'm, awesome. That's it makes it even better. I think the irregular borders and the it just oh, yeah. it's the chaotic nature of hell itself while on a DPS. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, congrats, Nick. Uh, that's, Thank you. Uh, that Thank is you. a keeper for sure. Yeah. So okay, so you know, I was actually not going to pick any of the art that I won. I thought it should. You know, it should have been more about, uh, you know, just talking about pieces that were there. But Dino and, and Bill were right. Picking a few pieces that we won to explain why we went after it uh, makes a lot of sense. I thought this was one of the 
bargains. This was definitely something that fell between the cracks. I mean, with the way Burn uh, X Men art is going, with the way I mean, even his X Men Else One pages, they're all going for two to three thousand yeah. dollars, and those aren't published. And this has Tiger Shark. It has Lady. I can't remember her name. And it's got Wolverine's claw. I mean, look, I'm a Submariner fan, so tar- t- Tiger Shark stood out to me. Right. But I, I, I just sat there and and said, "This." I, I didn't even do a cup bid on this. I don't think I just went to the next bid. I'm just sitting there like this has got to be a twenty five thousand dollar cover. This is one where I thought. Am I ever going to get a burn cover, a Wolverine burn cover again? Even if you don't see Wolverine, what are the chances that I'll get it? And I thought almost none. And I was just like, I was on this one. I was ready to go to 18 or or 20 all in with the juice. I was ready to go there. And it just, it just, I, you know, this is the other way it blew my mind that I got it at this price. It's, you know, I didn't want to go all the way to 25. I don't know why this was me saying I've got my limit. I've got to stop. And, but, you know, I mean, again, 15, 15, six is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of money, but there was no way I was going to get this at this. I I think it's a, it's a great bargain too. I think this is where Mm. that's 800 lots takes its toll and people can't really focus on everything so if everyone has their 15 lots or to look at they're not going to pick they, they may skip over this because they're like oh i don't see wolverine's costume right yeah and they'll they'll focus on other things but then this is a published burn wolverine cover right it's from the main series it's got some wonderful lines in it and truthfully like the like sometimes you see wolverine he's not even wearing a costume and, and no claws here you get the claws which is clearly it identifies it as as wolverine so yeah wow i mean yeah i think people got with so many lots you get you get a lot of uh you know gems that just go through the cracks because not I many people are waiting to bid bid on it yeah yeah no i agree you, you did really well on this one nick thank you thank you really really lucky and you know, count your blessings when they happen, right? I'll also say this is one that could benefit from, you know, it'll acetate with trade dress. I mean, if it if it screamed a Wolverine cover, I think it would have gone for an easy another 5000 just because it's... That's... that's uh, Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, you know, for sure. Yeah. I think this is, this is inks, right? burn, by the way. I, I yeah. don't think anybody else inked it. That's what I was double-checking because there's no signature on the, on the on the cover, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm guessing it's all burn. That's the other thing that it would, I mean, outside of, yeah. outside of, outside of burn Austin, um, this being pure burn at this, you know, I mean, this is like, this is still that sweet spot where it's sure it's after X-Men and after fantastic four, but it's like that man of steel uh, to before, before uh, danger unlimited, you know, before his dark and, 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 and his, his Superman, the the man of steel uh half splash went for 25 i think or 23 yeah which is take this any day it might be billigan verreen though (laughs) oh boy there's always a billigan in there somewhere so what do we got? This is uh, George Perez. Yeah. Oh, JLA 200 uh, page. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's the book that I keep telling you, please find in Mike's bins. How many times right. have I said, please find those bins? <laughs> I, know, I'm, I have looked for you. It's on my mind when I'm over there. Trust me. So if, anybody any has, so if anybody has any JLA 200 pages, just think about me. You mm-hmm. know, think about me. Um, I didn't think I was going to get this. I, you know, there's one collector, uh, forgive me for not remembering his name. He has most of the JLA 200 pages. Um, it doesn't have Flash. It doesn't have Green Lantern. Um, I just sat there and thought, well, you know, this is going to go for 10 to 12 grand because the person who has most of the pages is going to want to try and complete the book. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody else who wants a page is going to try and get it. And... I was talking to um, Michael and Will, and Will said I would probably go up to seven thousand plus juice, 
And he said, you know, you should go at least that high, Nick, because you wanted a Perez page. And I just thought, you know, it, it's one of those things where you're fighting in your mind. It's it's Firestorm. It's Perez. It's great. You know, Perez did a great Firestorm in the back of the Flash as a backup story. Um, it's Justice League. And I'm wrestling with it. And it's what you're always, as a collector, you're always trying to figure out, do I save my money to get the page that I would really want one day? Or do I get the page I can get today? And after having, you know, these decisions don't, you know, they're not, you know, the Sandman was a little bit of a snap judgment. Um, but again, it was because I was on the phone with somebody. This one was a little bit more well thought out ahead of time where I just said, you know what? If Will's willing to go to to seven plus juice, he's buying it partially as a collector, but he's going to sit on it for a little bit to sell it. He's giving me the advice to go for it myself. Michael's telling me, are you going to get this a, a, any chance again? And I just said, you know what? I'll I'll give it a shot. This was my final bid, though. I, I was Good. debating whether or not to go higher. Maybe I would have. I can't I can't see uh, the future, but uh, it's so glad you got it because I think when you, it's so easy to talk yourself out of bidding. I I, I know that everyone goes through these things and you kind of say, God, I, I I spent a week preparing to kind of go after this, and then you get there and you're like, well, I don't know about that panel or his face doesn't look right or it doesn't have this or that. Or at some point, you're kind of like, if you're the natural buyer, you're someone that can really appreciate it. You'll never regret if it's something that you really want. No one's going to tell you, you know. When, when they when they put comments on your calf gallery they're gonna go you know you actually got this at five hundred dollars less because you, right. you know it, it doesn't matter it's you get the what you get what you love and I think if it, you, you targeted this I'm you know it's good that you were able to kind of push yourself to to, to, to bid and get it so yeah definitely definitely fortunate and and again count my blessings I thought listen I've been looking for a JLA 200 page by Perez for seven years so I screwed up once um Glenn had two pages and they were like fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars and it was it was early pay it was pages like two and three and I debated for like 40 minutes when he posted it and by the time I went for it, um too late uh, yeah mike i can't remember his last name bought it um it's somebody who i've done done trades with on on calf and who i've worked with on calf um but uh he got it and then when he sold it he sold it to the collector who's been buying all the jla 200 pages so i, I missed out both times so uh this was you know after six years i just had to do it Oh, Congratulations! Man. Glad you did. Yeah, and I, I had a similar experience the other day with uh, a couple pieces that w were posted on Catskills website. Kept looking at them. I'm like, these two aren't going to last, but maybe they will. Maybe they'll maybe they'll last till tomorrow, and I can convince myself to buy them. And they and they both sold. They it took like four hours for for them to get marked as sold. And I and I and I had pretty much looked at them the whole four the hours. Whole I, I'm so I, I'm so disappointed in myself because they were priced pretty fairly, but. It was. I had that uh, that moment where I just I couldn't make up my if, mind. If you tell yourself that if I go after this at this bid, the next underbidder is kind of your floor. So if mm -hmm. I'm willing to risk another thousand or whatever for that extra bid, I mean it's not like it'll go to zero. If you think of that yourself, then it gives you a little bit more kind of a safety net because somebody else or some other people were bidding to a level where just under your bid. So right. You know, if you win it and, yeah, you know there's been de a, a demand at the level that's right below it, whatever that yeah. bid increment is. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good way to look at it. Well, it is, it's a very it, good way to look at it. Well, um, well, I wish I had more data to talk about here, but that's saved for another show. We did This was fun. I think this was fun. This Nick, was great, fun. great picks. Good. And I, glad, glad yeah. you could share some slides. And congratulations on Sandman, man. I, I agree. I mean, you both came away with some really great art. And uh, and I, I think this was good, kind of relating your stories through the through your, through the process. There, the pieces that got away and the ones that didn't. I, mean, I, I think that's this was good. I, I, I we could never do this on a, on that other show. You know, it just it wouldn't work. Yeah. So I'm glad we. It would uh, be a six-hour show. Plus, plus, 
we would all be doing shots because Mike would bring up Spider-Man, whether it would have sold yeah. more with Spider-Man. And or then Albert there. would be next, next, next. And we would yes, he would be interrupting it. us all. <laughs> right. No, so that's why this worked out well. And somebody asked earlier why, why they weren't here. I mean, at the end of the day, I actually said we we didn't need to have them both on there. I knew we were going to run late anyway. But I, They're just busy marking up all the stuff that we wish we had gotten. <laughs> right, right. And they didn't get us a, a list either. Okay. So that was the other requirement. We had said we needed a list, and neither guy gave us a list. So I knew uh, they weren't going to be on the show tonight. So better to have the night off. But, well, uh, it's but been no, great, we'll, Bill. We'll thank you. I like the I format. We'll and I hope it was good for uh, the audience. And always good to share the stage with Nick. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, are I was great looking for my screen. Carvel cake. You know, I, I, it, <laughs> when I go on the air with you guys, I need cake. You know? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> next time. Next time. Yes, next time. That's right. All right, guys. Well, uh, I appreciate it, and um, you know. Well, I think we should do this again. Definitely. I, 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 you know, I think we could, I can still do the other show and I still think we can tweak that to where it's uh, more appropriate and, and uh, enjoyable and insightful. But I, I, I like having this, uh, you know, this, the interaction of maybe, maybe we just do one person. Like maybe we, we can alternate to these because they do five a year. We can certainly get a lot in, but I think it's, uh, I think telling the stories of a, of a, person who is actively engaged with the auction is really a good primer for a lot of you know the audience to kind of understand what's going through your mind it'll help educate uh, others to be uh, as uh, as thoughtful and as thorough in, in their planning for for a, an auction like a heritage signature auction i i think as, and, and you know mike obviously and albert albert by the way look at rick walsh's comment um Albert, even when he buys as a collector, he's probably a little bit less emotional than the rest of us. And Mike obviously gets excited. He bought that Fantastic Four cover by Gil Kane. Mm -hmm. But I do think when you have guys that are primarily collectors, you're going to definitely get a different perspective that doesn't have that dealer hat on at the same time, you know? And uh, right. we'll get less criticism from Albert about how many mistakes we made. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, I think Albert would have been happy to come on here and, and criticize, which is why I, I told him both to take the night off. Albert's on the West Coast anyway. What is he doing? He should, he's, he's hanging out with Bruce Tim. He should be enjoying himself uh, doing that and not hanging out with us tonight. But he and Mike are more than welcome, though. We, we yes, have a great, absolutely. I'm make, not, that's, that's, that's I'm fun not telling him. I told Mike I was disappointed that he's been my constant ever since we started. You know, and and he and he, but he did kind of say he didn't really felt like he just wasn't up for it. He's had a few things going on, just been uh, nagging at him to get. So I'd love to know if those guys actually put in pre bids for like fifty things, right? At some level where they know they can resell and kind of see what pops up. Yeah, you know, I, actually go after pieces like Nick and I do. Like I, I, I'm waiting for this one, and I'll wait for this one. I'm I, curious. You know, I, don't, I, I should, I, you know, I, I, I can't tell you what Berkey's strategy is. I mean, I, although I, I do know that uh, certainly on the Comic Link auctions, the we and the weekly auction stuff, I know he places a lot of early bids on. Yeah, I think sure. Albert does too. I would think um, that he probably does the same thing on a signature auction as well, just to kind of have them in his lists, and he's getting reminders and yeah, and those sorts of things. So, uh, but probably, yeah. So that 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 would make sense. Well, I, I, you know, I don't think this is telling too much of a secret because I think Albert's been open about this. The way he does it is he has the pieces that he wants, um, whether it's something that he wants for his collection or something that he wants that it'll have for a little bit and then sell. Mm -hmm. But what Albert will do is if, and, and he's not the only one who does this. Bashar does the same thing. They, you know, to a degree, all the dealers do this. They have the list of items that they want. And if they don't get as many of the items that they want, then they allocate those dollars to get something they think is a good value that they can sell. So one way or another, you can almost guarantee they're going to spend the money that they had preset. It just ends up being that I get what I want or did I get do I get right. what I kind of want that I can sell later or did I just get anything I can sell later? And that's really the mindset that most dealers go with. And you can't blame them. I mean, look, they're running a business and they're collectors. They're both. So, you know, okay. my hat's off to them for that. I can never look at it that way. You know, for me, it's a little bit more of I've got my eye on these pieces. And if I don't get them, then let me look at other pieces. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's. You know, it, it would have been easy for me to say after that Sandman, I'm done. You know, it would have been real. It, well, the burn, then the Sandman, because I got the burn first. And I could I could have said, you know what, I'm done. But then 
uh, just a bunch of the pieces like the Justice League. And like I said, the two Braithwaite Alex Ross pieces, $1,300 yeah. each felt like a steal. I was just like, mm -hmm. whoa, this is great stuff. So if only any of them had the Flash or Green Lantern, but that's another story. <laughs> Oh man! Well, again, I think we'll do this. Definitely do it again. And uh, but we've got time to think about. It. I think the next signature auction is the week after Comic Art Live, so yep. uh, just before Thanksgiving. Yep, so, just like uh, last year. The week. Yeah, we've got that to think about too, because that oh, uh, yeah. that, that Thursday would when we would normally do a calf update would be thanks Thanksgiving. Well, we'll work out the schedule. I, you know, it's the it'll be easy for us to come up with something even Sounds if we have good. to okay they're, they're kicking me out of heritage now so uh, yeah, yeah. yeah they want to turn the lights off all right yeah. guys i appreciate right, you thanks, both coming tonight Thank thanks you so much. thanks everyone Take care. Bye -bye. all right well man what a show and we haven't even done anything related to the calf update tonight we should have just made tonight a special two event uh you know segment and then kick the calf update to friday or something I don't know. Maybe and maybe we should. I don't know what to do at this point because it is already twenty till midnight here, and I've been at it for almost uh, well three hours and forty minutes. But there's there's certain things that I can't let go until tomorrow if I wanted to uh, to move the calf update. And just so everybody knows, I told Chris Snork that if I went past ten thirty that that he he could have the night off. <laughs> and so we've certainly uh, gone well past ten thirty. So uh, so I don't expect Chris to pop in here and, and hang out with me, but. So I'm debating what to do. I mean, we have, you know, pretty much have like a full, like, tell me what to do, Bill. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, the, some of this stuff could either, uh, yeah, get some rest. Bill. So everybody says I should probably call it a night. But here's the thing. I do have some stuff that I, I wanted to mention because, because you're right. I mean, sh the thing is, should I do this as a Friday show? Because there's picks and all that stuff. I don't want to miss out on being able to promote a lot of this stuff. And I don't mind it. I could probably cr uh, rush through most of this stuff tomorrow in, in about an hour. But I wanted to go over a couple things because, uh, you know, I had a weekly flip. So I, I feel like that's not that now is not the time to show a weekly flip. It's too late in the show. I'd rather have it be uh, kind of at least flowing with the uh, with the regular calf update. So um, but one of the things I wanted to mention because Jeff Wedding sent me a little announcement that I wanted to make sure I got out there. Uh, if you're heading to Vegas this week weekend that uh, the amazing Las Vegas Comic-Con, there's going to be a calf dinner meetup and, uh, on Saturday. And Jeff wanted everybody to know, if you're making the trip to the show, to reach out to Jeff through his calf gallery, and he will get you the details on the dinner meetup. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty important. I think the more meetups that we can help encourage out there, the better, especially when it's the, the Las Vegas chapter, because uh, the, they are working overtime to make sure everybody who goes to Vegas is welcome when they get there. And uh, here's a special event that hopefully will draw a nice sized crowd. And don't forget to bring your cameras. So I want I want some photographs from that so that we can talk about it next week on, on a regular Thursday cap update. But uh, thank you, Jeff, for letting me know about it. And uh, again, I think anybody who is going to be making the trip out there should... Uh, should definitely. Oh, Ian's at the, you're at you're, you're at the airport right now. Uh, all right, show the EXP. Well, I'm definitely have to show. That was the other thing I was going to say is that I need to show the EXP preview because if I do, I, I don't mind. And as long as you know, I'll just do it tomorrow, the cap update, and I'll do it at nine after uh, Nick is done with his show because as everybody knows, uh, you know, well Nick is on seven to eight, so we don't have to. We're never in conflict with one another. But uh, the EXP is uh, is tomorrow, and we got a. Uh, I did get my my preview clip from Nick before the show, so let me go ahead and show that because uh, there's some pretty good art in tomorrow's uh, uh, art experience by uh, Nick. So let me play this for you right now. Hey everybody, this Friday. I was about to say February 16th, but it's actually September 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Original Art Experience. Join us for some cool artwork, for some fun, and we're going to mix it up as we always do. So let's see, Friday, 7 p.m., uh, September 16th. What else am I supposed to do? Oh, the art. Let's go into the art. All right. So we are going to have... Look, we're gonna have our affordable art that we'll be showcasing, but I decided this week, let's do a little bit more. So we've got this beautiful Red Sonia number seven cover by Jamie Biggs in homage to Todd McFarlane's Wizard number one cover. Then we have Dynamite 
with Zombie Red Sonia over Zombie Vampirella in homage to Amazing Spider-Man 316. Then we have a Sheena cover by Roberto Castro to issue number four. This is from the 2017 series. Then we are giving away no purchase necessary to someone this Jamie Biggs Nick's cover in homage to Wizard Magazine. So this will be free. All you gotta do is watch the show, enter, no purchase necessary. Whoa. God, just because I'm giving it away for free doesn't mean I should damage it. Then we have a Ghost Rider cover by Javier Soltares, which is gorgeous. Two Brides for a Demon. Hey, what else do you expect? And then this beautiful Mike Perkins uh, Punisher cover that, uh, let's see. So when Ruben did his show with Mike Perkins and I talked about how much I love Mike Perkins art, he, uh, what did he say? That I was blowing smoke? I'm not sure that was a compliment, but I love Mike Perkins art, so I am going to showcase this. We're also going to have our affordable art. We'll also have our commission cover art. So this Friday, September 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern, tell your friends, tell everybody about the free giveaway and hit that thumbs up and share. Look forward to seeing you Friday. Yeah, I'm not sure why that video was stuttering. I apologize. Nick, Nick's in the green room. I can see him. So sorry about that, Nick. It was uh, acting a little weird there at the end. I'm not quite sure why. I've never had that happen before because uh, those are actually loaded into the studio. Now, what, I will do one other thing before I call it a night. I will do a calf update tomorrow at 9 and just cover the basics. But I wanted to give everybody a teaser because on Saturday I am doing an art sale with uh, Mike Oming. And we've done that once before. It was a lot of fun. I liked hanging out with Michael a lot. And I was, you know, I wanted to preview the artwork that we're going to be showing on on Saturday just to kind of show it off because there's a lot of really, really nice pieces in it. And I was going to do a preview kind of teaser stuff for what we're going to do on Monday with next comic art, but I'll do that tomorrow. But for tonight, I'll go ahead and show the Oming pieces. Uh, I don't know what the count is. It's probably about 20 pieces in total. But uh, so I, we've got a uh, Black Panther cover here, uh, issue three. You know, I just love Oming style, but uh, you know, I, I was a little surprised at that one. I, you know, he's got, he's got, he's, he has a lot of uh, inventory, but uh, so I, I never know what he's going to send us when we do an art sale with him. So this was a nice piece to see, uh, Black Panther three. I think it was an IDW something or other, but I don't. Remember. I'd have to go back and look through my notes. So, so then he's got some Cave Carson artwork. I, I think we sold the cover to this issue in the last one. So uh, this one features Superman in it. And I think the cover image is very similar to, uh, to this particular page as well. So this is the interior that, uh, you know, mirrors the, uh, the cover image to Cave Carson on that one. Uh, another Cave Carson cover will be available. This one here, uh, some darkness uh, character studies that he had put together. Uh, a dark seed pinup. I mean, everything's going to be really reasonably priced. Most of the stuff, I think, like this piece is two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, most of uh, Mike's covers are in the, I don't know, eleven hundred to fourteen hundred dollar range by and large. So, uh, so you know, very affordable stuff. This really, this is an incredible Dick Tracy cover. I mean, we we had a couple of those in the last sale. Uh, let's see, a Green Arrow. This is just a, a sketch. I think it's. I think it's not, I don't even think it's $300. might be $275, something along those lines. So really affordably priced stuff. Uh, another, uh, this was a, a Katana sample when he was trying to, to get work uh, there. A, a Madman pinup that is actually published. Uh, this is just a uh, for fun sketch from uh, of New Gods. Uh, he had a couple old guard pieces. This was a cover and uh, an interior page. Uh, another Powers Bureau cover here. Uh, I, Another Powers cover. This is issue two. Um, another Bureau cover. Uh, yeah, let's see, what was this? This was a regular. This was like, I think, the last Powers cover that was uh, solicited, but then not released. So it's not, it's technically not published, but signed by Bendis as well. Another Powers cover. Uh, uh, this is an interior, uh, first appearance of Diamond. And uh, another splash page. And then this was really nice. This was the Omnibus Volume 1 cover to uh to powers i thought this one was pretty awesome so uh so yeah lots of good stuff and we'll get to hang out with michael on saturday and that'll be a 2 p.m eastern show and then an x-men piece of all things it was a proposal piece for something but uh it's got magic and colossus and lady thor and hella on it thought it was a nice piece 
I don't recall what it, what uh, price he put on it, but it, you know, I think it's probably like six or seven hundred dollars somewhere around in there. And most of the stuff is all eleven by seventeen, as well. So uh, so it should be a fun show, definitely on Saturday. So uh, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, new gods exactly, Chuck. So uh, we got that, and uh, I'm a Bill. Your pronunciation guy. It's dark side. All right, dark side. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I'm trying to be a pronunciation guy. Um, at any rate, yeah, I, I figure you know Khalil should know about that. I tried putting it, making a note that it, you know in the uh, email that I sent out the other day, I mentioned that there was um, uh, the Black Panther cover in there, but I thought there would be some interest in, in that. And I think it was only, I think it's fourteen hundred dollars around there. I, I don't think it's more than that. So decent stuff, decent prices, and uh, yeah, I mean, and a good. He's a really great guy to hang out with. So I'm looking forward to Saturday. So like I said, we're gonna do a an hour long show. I'm going to be like Nick Barucci tomorrow. I'm going to keep it from nine to 10. I will do the calf update. Chris, you can keep, you know, Mr. Snork, keep the night off. I apologize, but we're going to go through his picks because all, all 20 of our picks were really great this week. And it would be, uh, it wouldn't be proper for us not to promote them live in a show. Uh, so I don't expect a great turnout on a Friday since that's a, that's a normal night that I like to have off, but I know I don't have anything going on tomorrow night. So I will take care of it then. But, uh, and I'll, touch on the rest of the schedule i've got a few new sales shows to talk about i can almost talk about that artist that i was have been teasing that i'm going to be able to work with uh, i did finally kind of settled on things they're going to at a show this weekend and when they come back we're going to talk and hopefully we'll have some shows with them in the very near future and I, I've, I've got a show lined up with uh, uh, uh jeff m art uh, sales as well like and i've Almost have a second show lined up with a cadence artist, artist is again. So lots of good stuff coming up. But uh, but yeah, it's almost midnight here. So I'm going to call it an evening. Thank you for everybody tuning in. Thank you for Micah for uh, for the preview. And of course, for Dino and Nick for hanging out with me for a couple hours going through all the, their, uh, their approach to the Heritage Auctions this past weekend. It was a lot of fun. And like I said, I think we're going to we're going to integrate that in one way or another into future uh, future shows into the cap update and in a weird way it almost could use its own segment because it is uh, there is a lot to go over there but um, both guys were very articulate in covering their reasons for what they were buying and, and what they were thinking about and uh, and what they were passing over you know because of other future purchases so it's good show so all right everybody I'm gonna it's it's midnight it's it's bedtime here at uh, the at Bill's Hacienda in Florida so I will see you again tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and I promise you I will be done by 10.